today for the very first time, we, and specifically me for the first time, but the rest of us as well, we are no going, way. <laughs> whatever, death magnetic. <laughs> I've listened to this album lots of times. Yes. Same. Yeah. But this will be the first time that I've ever heard the iTunes remaster. Yes. So before we get to that, though, on Metallica, I have a few things I want to say at the beginning. So welcome, everybody. If you're new here, go back to the channel. Go back on the channel. Watch all the other Metallica reactions we've been doing since the beginning of the year. If you're someone who's been following us on this journey, thank you very much for joining us uh, for Death Magnetic. Um, thank you very much for supporting any of the other Metallica videos that have been coming out on my channel. We've had a couple of shorter St. Anger related videos. Uh, Chris Parker or Remote Chris and I have done a few things with St. Anger. I showed Chris Schoenberg just the other day. This video hasn't posted or anything yet. And I might attach it to this video, but he heard the uh, Some Kind of Monster edit for the very first time. Ooh. Just a few seconds of it. We were listening oh, to it. Yeah. Super impressed with the way it was mixed, but... Anyway, we've got other sort of, sort of like shorter Metallica videos that have been coming out. My 12-year-old nephew has reacted to uh, Sad But True and Master of Puppets. And to let everybody know, though I haven't shared this information yet, his favorite Metallica song so far is Lux Eterna. We, we did a reaction to Lux Eterna. I re hmm. recorded it, uh, I think, last and weekend. Kids liking fake drums. <laughs> he doesn't have any idea about any of that stuff. But hey, but if you want to know what he thinks about Master of Puppets and Sabbath True, check those out. If you are one of the people who has been following and like watching all these other sort of like smaller, unrelated to these official album reactions that I've been posting about Metallica or any other band that I've been posting about, thank you very much for doing that. And like I said, if this is your first time here, we're going to be talking about Metallica. Then we're going to listen to this Death Magnetic all the way through, pausing between each song to sort of discuss what we're hearing. It's going to probably be a quite a long video. People often accuse us of being podcasters instead of reactors. So if that sounds like your thing, feel free to throw our video on while you're cleaning the kitchen or driving in your car or something. It's a react cast Treat us, treat us, a react cast Yeah. I can't think of any yeah. other way to say that. So react cast sure. That works for me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Now, we make faces while we listen to stuff. We do. I, 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 Patrick I, zooms in on them and the editing process and everything. It takes. Sometimes quite a, we bit do of faces at the beginning and end so we can just cut them in later. Yeah, but I've never. <laughs> yeah, done everybody sit there. Although, and if make... you want to right now, we could. We, let's everybody make a crazy face and I'll use it as the thumbnail. There we go. Um. I have a few things I want to go over really quick at the beginning, and so I made a list because I we want to get to list. Metallica real this is quick. Getting professional. Okay, so first of all, a, p a few people have been commenting on the if if you just want to get to the music, skip to the next chapter, and we're going to be talking about Metallica, and then maybe skip maybe two or three chapters later, and we'll get to the first song. But <laughs> but if you are a fan of the channel, you've been with us for a while. Just bear with me for a few minutes while I go through a couple things. Um, a few people have been asking me how they can. Uh, like like donate money to the channel or people have said like try to add like a tip button or something and i think nice. one of the reasons i don't have any options to do those things yet is because i have not yet made the required ten dollar minimum amount before youtube like sends me like i think they send me a check in the mail like a physical check with a piece of paper i think that has a card like a card that has like a code on it that i have to put into the system and then like my banking information and everything gets all set up that way patrick huh. will post that online when he's done i'm not going to post that <laughs> his banking information not going to post that however like and subscribe 10,000 likes and we'll post patrick's banking information <laughs> 10,000 10, subs 10,000 likes number. are you kidding me we'd we'd have to get like 500,000 views to get a 10,000 likes. Your banking information. There's like there you go. 12 bucks in there. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. there's definitely, <laughs> if I shared it, we wouldn't even be able to give a penny to every one of those 10,000 people. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just want to say, on, I'm not sure exactly what day of the week next week this video will get posted, but on last Saturday, I posted a video that's on my channel and it's just called Unboxing 40 Met or Unboxing 60 Plus Metal CDs, I think I decided to call it. It is a, a video that I posted on my channel that is fully monetized from me. Nothing goes to any band or anything. There's no music in it. It's an hour and 15 minutes long of me going through and unboxing a bunch of CDs that I got earlier in the year. So I want to ask everybody here, if you can, 
and you care about the channel and all this stuff, if you don't, that's totally fine. If you don't want to do this, go watch that video or just like leave it up or something and on a computer screen or something and walk away and just let it run. I set that video to have ads at the beginning and throughout the video. I didn't place any ads, but if we get like, you know, I don't know, like a thousand or a couple thousand people like watch through the entirety of that video, we maybe I can get closer to my $10 minimum amount that I need to make on YouTube. As of right now, I can huh. look on the app and tell you exactly how much money I've made. Last I looked, I think it was 52 cents. I have a ton of videos on my channel that are monetized, but I would say probably 90% of all the videos on my channel cannot be monetized. Everything that you, li everything that has a song in it, any video that has a song in it, all that money goes to that artist. So, so far I've made 61 cents That's total. A lot. Just on Wednesday, it was 51. That's a dime in yeah. two days. Yeah. That's so, pretty good. So, so I'm doing a sort of a call to action here. I will not do Watch this in the, the future. Watch the glass etching video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could that has like thirty thousand views or something stupid i do have an old glass etching video on my channel okay so i'm here gonna glass etch a mirror thought you guys might find it interesting i have all sorts of stuff you probably don't want to go see on my channel i have a music rap music video that i uploaded many 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 years ago uh, i have actually two rap music videos that i uploaded so you guys can go watch some of that stuff all of that money go, would go to me as well and i did go through every individual video and click like whether it could be monetized or not most of them say it can't be but anyway i will never do this again in the future i just want to try to get past that 10 minute 10 dollar minimum hump and then i think a lot more options will open up to me so for those of you who've been following the channel and everything, you you don't have to give me any money. Just give me views and give me time watching that f that video. Um, I was going to say, I've been thinking of what you could do for Patreon content. And like the one that I thought of that made the most sense was like, if we just get together like this and then we just do that thing that we used to do where it's like, here's a song. What do you think about that? And we just like toss music between each other and have, you know, a bullshit react off. Mm -hmm. And then we do that for an hour or two or however long it takes i would love that you but could even do it unedited but see to me to. to me that would be more of a like what we could actually do for a podcast you know because youtube has a podcast tab now you can upload yeah you can like we this could is a podcast we could legit it. i guess but we could legitimately restart the music room i've been thinking about that a lot um, yeah, that's but, true. but don't worry about that, everybody. I just like this is I just wanted to mention it's the four, unboxing metal CDs video. It should be right on my channel. I'd probably be the video. I have. Uh, well, I have a, f a few other things coming out that I want to shout out to. But so there's that. If anyone wants to do that, I would greatly appreciate that. I also want to shout out. I've also mentioned the videos with Hunter. So I have that. I've already crossed that off. It's a whole series that I'm going to be doing on my channel now. Whenever he comes to visit me, which is maybe once every month and a half or so, we're going to just record him reacting to maybe five or six different bands. I have decided to do bands instead of just songs now. So he's listened to Sum 41, AFI, uh, Cake. He's listened to um, uh, uh, No Doubt. Um, he's listened to a few different, a few, a bunch of different things, including some other Metallica songs that are going to be coming out. So check that out. Make sure you keep an eye out for that. Um, on Sunday, so I think a couple days before this was posted, it should already be out on my channel. My Seven Dust Truth Killer album reaction came out, and I want everyone to go watch that. Give Seven Dust the money, first of all, because that's where it's all going to go to. I think it may be one of the best reactions I've ever done on my channel. I absolutely lose my mind while listening to this album. It shocked me to the core how phenomenal this new Seven Dust album is. I, I was literally out of breath from just like bashing myself around, just listening to the absolute heavy just crushing guitars and the way the album is mixed it's it's absolutely phenomenal so everyone go check out my seven dust truth killer See, reaction right up to the point where you said how phenomenal the album is you could have left it you could have left it it wouldn't have been immediately obvious if it was because it was good or bad i was captivated i know that, and then but, i was yeah. and then you ruined it there are uh -huh. so many reactions you can go watch on my channel where they're where I'm bashing myself in the head because it's terrible. I want to uh -huh. celebrate the ones that are good. And if you're familiar, no, I just mean spoiler alert. You know, if like, you're familiar with my channel, alert. you know that Chris Parker and I reacted to the Seven Dust single that came out earlier this year, and I did not like it. That song is mm -hmm. over compressed and sounds terrible. And I said in that video that Seven Dust is one of those bands who could potentially have their single sound completely different sonically on their album. And thank the Lord that is the actual case. Every other song on this album, the other 11 tracks on this album sound phenomenal 
And that one track, which they put at the very end of the album because they knew it sucked, that track called Fence is the album closer, and you can just skip it when you get to that track. But the whole rest of the album is phenomenal, and it may actually be Seven Dust's best album they've ever released. Their single their is career. the last track on the album? Yes, that's weird. That song we listened to with the with the zombies and stuff, or we didn't watch the video, but there's a sweet music, claymation music video with zombies. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, I also want to shout out to everybody that I have been going through and back through our catalog of reacting to Metallica. Ride the, I've done Ride the Lightning and some Justice so far. Um, making shorts out of conversations that Chris and I have had, and then eventually I'll get oh, to cool. conversations between the three of us. So I'm going to be uploading some shorts to my YouTube channel. So everybody that's been following us, you know how hilarious some of our conversations are. You know how hilarious it is that I think We're one is Me- one is Metallica's worst song. Like You don't think that anymore. I do not think it's that anymore. No. Especially not since I've heard that stupid anesthesia song which is terrible. But <laughs> well, but um there's going to be some shorts coming out, so everybody watch those if you can. Some of those are going to be able to be monetized because they're just they're le- they all have to be less than a minute, but they're just me and Chris Schoenberg. I haven't edited any with Chris Parker yet. It's just the two of us. Like, there's a hilarious one I did where Chris is talking about how the only person whose opinion he knows is actually factually wrong is me. It's like I've got a bunch of good little fun <laughs> things where we're like making fun of each other and stuff. I've described Patrick like that to strangers who do not know him. I'd be like, so my friend Patrick, like nobody's opinion is wrong except for his. Right, right, and so. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so there's going to be some shorts coming out on my channel for that. So make sure you guys check those out. Those are easy, easily shareable things without your, anybody who has friends who are like Metallica fans. And you want to be like, look at what this idiot thinks of one. This guy. Look at the disrespect to Cliff Burton saying Anesthesia is like the worst song of all time in Metallica's catalog. It definitely is not even a song. It's just a interlude. Well, and I feel like I was just going to say, I think I can I, I might have a song in mind that you haven't heard yet that you might think is worse. But is it on Death if, Magnetic? No, hardwired. Then it's on Garage. Oh, Garage. Okay. Um, okay. But if but it is still a song. Okay. And if it's and if the fact that it's, and it's just barely a song is what makes it so awful, then it, nothing's ever going to beat that. Yeah. Well, it's not just the fact that it's not a song. It's the fact that it's a bass solo for like four minutes, and then some crappy <laughs> sounding drums come in for the last thirty seconds. It's awful. So there's going to be shorts. Um, another thing I want to just point out real quick, if you look behind me here on my set, you'll see I have this. I have a bunch of Twisted Metal stuff set out here. I'll try to zoom in so you can see. I have all the games right here. I'm not even going to bother with that. Ooh. I have my Sweet Tooth action figure over here, which now is worth less, no less than $100 anywhere online. I bought it cool. for That's your what, retirement. Right there. When I actually used my employee discount at the time, so I think I got that for fourteen ninety nine. Wow! And then the cro- the prize the prize possession in my uh, in my Stonks. twist in my twisted metal collection is my official uh, sweet tooth cardboard cutout promotional piece from, from when. Black? No, this is from the twisted metal uh, PS three version game that oh. came out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. God, black was such a weird thing. This one. That's even weirder. Yeah, which is definitely the worst Twisted Metal game. Black is my favorite Twisted Metal game. So Interesting. Yeah, oh, black I is I never the played best. black because I wanted... Oh. I, I thought I needed the... I either thought I needed the modem or I wanted it or something. But oh, well, like, you screwed up, sir, because, because black is phenomenal. The only game I don't have is Twisted Metal Head On, which is the PSP game. Mm. Uh, and then actually, I think there's one that's called like it's a remake of that for the PS2 called Tiny Twisted Metal, Tiny Twisted Metal, or something like that. It doesn't matter. Small something. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason I have this stuff set up is because I am going. I'm officially announcing here. I am going to be reacting to the entire season one of the Twisted Metal TV show. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to become a video reaction channel. It's just that I happen to be one of the few people on Earth who legitimately loves Twisted Metal, loves the lore, loves Calypso, and I'm so very excited to watch the TV show that I know is going to be absolutely horrific and terrible. I'm sure. Even though I do love Anthony Mackie as an actor, Samoa Joe plays the body double for Sweet Tooth, and then the voice is Will Arnett or something, I think. Will like Arnett, that. yeah. Which is an yeah. interesting choice. It is very interesting. But the fact that Samoa Joe is the body the body actor for Sweet Tooth was really awesome. But um, So, yeah. It's funny you, that you think you're the only fan of Twisted Metal. <laughs> well, there's just not a lot of people out there that love Twisted Metal, are there? Otherwise, there'd be, still be Twisted Metal games. I mean, I don't think that's true. I think that there's a lot of people... 
that are fans of Twisted Metal and nobody is making Twisted Metal games, but they are making a show and it's not a show for nobody. So. That's true. Although I'm pretty sure the show tanked and they'll never make a season two, but who knows? People like the that Beatles happens. and they don't have records coming out anymore. <laughs> That's a good thought. That's a good thought. David yeah, Jaffe, can't, he's can't working argue on other stuff now. <laughs> anyway, okay. So uh, one other thing I have to say is that we I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but Pretty soon in the coming weeks on my channel, we will have a reaction that Chris Schoenberg and I did to a lady I had never heard of before called Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, finally. And I finally got to hear that album, and it shocked me in a way. Let's leave a cliffhanger. In finally. a way. Let's leave something in some way. For, it mm -hmm. was. It was shocking. Good or better than one? Mm, gotta watch the video when it comes out. Patrick is going to have a list of... Hopefully you don't things. want to see us moving, though, because I had some technical difficulties with that. <laughs> okay, the last thing the last thing we're going to talk about before we get to the actual music here is I have a box that I got today uh -oh. in the mail, and inside that box was some stuff that box. really surprised me. And some stuff that didn't surprise me. I mean, technically, I ordered all of it, so none of it surprised me, but... That box inside of another box and mail it to myself. Here's a box that I can't show you my address on. So I'll just do this. So I got this obviously from Amazon today. Well, maybe not Alan's. Well, what would it matter? And so I ordered a few things on Amazon on Monday. I was hoping they would get here today for this so that I could like showcase them in this video. Because one of the things is the brand new Seven Dust album, Truth Killer. So that I could say, hey, go watch my reaction. But I already said that, so that's fine. Here's the actual disc. Look at how sweet this is. Metallica, Eat Your Hearts Out by the black and yellow artwork. And check out check out the disc here. Doesn't this look like Metallica's 72 Seasons logo? It does, kind of. Yeah, can you grab the 72 Seasons up there? What the hell are you talking about? What are you looking at? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we're looking at the comparison between... Oh, seven... Is that seven dust? Seven dust and seventy-two seasons. It's like a whole. I see. Oh, see. So this one flops out like this. It's a quad fold. Who ben did Queller. It? I think I'm. I'm not sure if I told you this. Ben Queller has a. Uh, that's what a different it? color yellow. It is a different color yellow. Mm -hmm. It looks green on screen. Huh. Mm -hmm. Ben yellow. Queller has a an album that the the CD case. I swear I've seen a, a seventy-two seasons logo in. though. Yeah. Look at this. Oh yeah. Huh. Wow. That's. Huh. Who did it better? I can tell you which band is a better band by far. <laughs> nope. But I'll Correct. save that for a future conversation. Now, not true. The other thing that I have in here, I'm so excited because y'all don't know this, but we are recording this on a Friday, right? Yeah, Fridays are the days that new albums come out, and there That's just true. so happened to be two albums come out today that I pre-ordered months ago. Ringworm. Not ringworm, no. New ringworm's good. New Grace Potter, Chris Parker. Today. Are you there? Yeah, I'm trying to think of why. Do you not care about I Grace Potter? About, I don't think I do. <gasps> <laughs> I thought we talked I know, about. No, I never Grace listened Potter. to Grace Potter. You, I, it what sounds familiar, but like. <laughs> Dude, okay, so for anyone that doesn't know, Grace Potter's the fucking best. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Listen, this could be possibly my number one album of the year. I guess, you, Chris, then I don't need to worry about asking you to react to this with me because you don't care. Um, that's so great. We're going to react to every freaking Grace Potter album now on my channel. So, <laughs> woo, that's exciting. The other thing that comes out today, fans of Metallica will know this is the second official full length album by the band Orbit Culture. Oh, I saw that came out today. Neat. Th this it, their first album, uh, their first full length album, Nia, came out two years ago and was my number two album that year. Oh, it is one of the best metal albums I've ever heard, and I think it's one of the most brutal things in my entire CD collection. And uh, yeah, Chris, they're singing in it, but it's still brutal. <laughs> Way heavier than anything Metallica ever thought about doing. So anyway. Uh, this Who told culture? you that Metallica was supposed to be the heaviest band of all time? They're not the I know. I have, I have a lot of baggage. So, so <laughs> Chris, Chris Parker, the last thing on here that I'm excited to share with you, I got in the mail. Ooh. Why do I recognize this? This is my vinyl copy 
of the album Lies by the band oh. Lies. Yes, okay. Jeez, I was like that. And so I was the reason I bring really this up... Made a fool of. This band is relatively completely unknown. They have less than 4,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Metallica Army, people who are watching this video... I have released two videos on my channel talking about this album and making both Chris Parker and my cousin Cody listen to a song from this album. It is track one on this album called Blemishes. It is the song of the year. It is my number one song of the year. I've been thinking about it since it came out in February. Nobody knows what this album is. That Go album looks enormous in the camera. <laughs> Sorry, let As me you're hold it back yeah, here. Just, you had it out here. It's like, that's a four, by four foot by four foot album. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need Chris anymore. So, so Chris Parker, last time I talked to you, we talked about this and I looked them up on Bandcamp and they were selling their record for 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, this is on sale on Amazon this last week, at least. I don't know when the sale ends for just 20 bucks. Nice. So I was, I was thinking about buying it for 30 bucks to support them because they're freaking awesome and they made a great album. That's probably going to be in my top three albums of the year this year. And I was going to support them at $30, but for $20, I'll absolutely rip them off and give a big percentage of the money to Amazon. I don't care about that. So everyone go look up the band Lies. It is not very comparable to, to Metallica at all. However, it's phenomenal. I have two videos on my channel, so you can go check it out. Or just go look up Lies on Spotify, Lies by Lies. Look for the image of the pelican thing with the blue swirls. And you will not be disappointed. It's one of the yeah, best. I've been showing that to several people. It's, it's one like, of the best recorded albums this. I've heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. I always talk about music production here on my channel. It's the thing we talk about the most. And that is going to be an album that I always look to as an example of how to produce something correctly. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. And the first track on that album, like I said, is my absolute number one favorite song of the year. So, all right, that was the last thing on my list. I still can't believe Grace Potter's new album came out today, and we're wasting time with Metallica when we could be listening to that. But here we are. It is time for Death Magnetic. Or at least for us to talk about it for a half hour before we get to the music. Yep. So, what does anybody want to say? Let's discuss Metallica. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's Metallica. I'm excited to listen to this one. I'm looking forward to it. So, what order? What order did we decide we were going to do this in? So, you yes. Asked about because we're going to probably do three versions at some point. No, I think we're just going to stick to the two. Okay, that was my plan. And I think what I think the thing that makes the most sense is we are going to listen to the official iTunes master, like the the mastered for iTunes version, which is. I spent a large portion of the morning this morning trying to figure out the different versions of this. People have been sending us comments saying, make sure you guys listen to the Guitar Hero version. Guitar Hero version. This specific Guitar Hero version. Listen to this. Listen to this. Just listen to the CD. We've had a couple people say, it's not as bad as people say it is. Just listen to the CD. We've had a couple people I mean, I definitely that. need you to hear the CD. We're going to, for sure. So don't worry about that. We're going to listen to... I was thinking what we would do is listen to one song from the CD, and I just literally ripped this CD so we can listen to... I figured I'd let you guys pick. Is that original pressing? This is the original pressing, wow. yes. Wow. And so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to one song of the over of the over over compressed version and then we're going to listen to the entire album in the in the what I think it's it was I think it's from Metallica's website from 2016 the exact version we're going to be listening to is the blackened mastered for iTunes it's the official for those of you who don't know this album has been reissued since 2010 in a version that's called the Mastered for iTunes version. So since 2010, if you go to iTunes and you listen to this album, you're hearing a master that was made specifically for that, that was made using the stems pre-master, pre-like CD official release master. So it's a whole different remaster. Since 2010, on iTunes, that version is the same exact version Metallica has been selling on their website, uh, just digitally. So if you go to Metallica's website, I went there and looked this morning, and you you just type into the search bar, Death Magnetic, it brings up the different physical versions you can buy, it brings up like a t-shirt or whatever, but then there's a digital version. You click on the digital version. For $9.99, you can buy the MP3s. 
for uh, I think twelve ninety nine. You can buy the FLAC files or the AL, the the Apple whatever lossless files. Then for seventeen dollars, you can buy the twenty four bit uncompressed version. Uh, which is what we're going to be listening to, the FLAC 24-bit files. And then you can also buy the uh, the lossless 24-bit like Apple file or whatever. And that's also $17.99. And underneath when you're purchasing that, every single one of them says, this is the uh, 2010 mastered for iTunes version. So this is the official Metallica release since 2010 that you can buy from their website and on iTunes. If you right now go to Spotify or click on the Spotify link that I've provided in the description of this video, you will hear the CD version, the overcompressed version. Okay? Have you tested this? No, I can't test it. How can I test it? I haven't heard a second of this. I just can't this. believe that. I just can't believe that. According to, to people on the internet, Spot, the Spotify version is the compressed version. And Chris has title, and he was looking earlier, but he couldn't tell. It didn't say on it the It didn't list. say. It said it was released in 2008, which right. so was which the album. Which it would say regardless, You'd I think. You'd think it would say remastered 2010 if it yeah. was, but yeah, it doesn't. Really and that's really weird, because why are we talking about this anyway? Why are we talking about all the different masters of this that came out? Because apparently they screwed it up so bad initially it had to be remastered. It which was is pretty stupid. bad. Chris learned some stuff about mastering on the day that that yeah. album came out in 2008. <laughs> and you've said it. You've said that that's like it literally made you like feel fatigued or whatever listening to it, right? Yeah, and I was or, listening to it in a car, like yeah. in a loud car. Yeah, and you're like, this is too much. It was. Yep. And Chris Parker, you and I have said, I think, before that you should never listen to music that makes you want to turn it, keep turning it down or up. I can't remember what we were saying in that. You right. don't want to have to turn it down. You want that, to turn music up. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's what like we were you really saying. like this thing. You want to turn it up. If it's already up, you got nowhere to go. Right. Exactly. Exactly. If it sounds like there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, so, so the reason I bring up all this, all this up to say is like there are probably going to be a lot of people, maybe even like people like Chris, who probably haven't. Well, maybe not like you because you do like this album, but there, there might be. I love this album. Every one of our videos, we've had people comment saying, "Wow, I haven't listened to this album for years or since it came out." or I've been wearing my copy out for 10 years or whatever the album happens to be, however long it's been out, there's going to be people who watch this who probably don't even know that there's a new official release of this album other than just the know. original. Yeah, Chris Parker did not know. He thought that there was just these Guitar Hero mat versions, which I tried to look up those versions, and it seems to me like there's three different Guitar Hero remasters that people mixed and mastered the album themselves, getting the stems from the code of the game. I just don't know because that, that was the whole story pretty shortly after that record came out and somebody can correct us in the comments but like within a few months or a year of that album coming out that that was the whole thing go we got they remastered it for guitar hero and now it's way better and like right. i think i thought i remembered back then that was a long time ago now like listening to it on the internet somewhere or i mean whatever. the thing is i have i have the guitar hero 3 dlc version that I got when that happened, and right. it's the one in my car. It's the version of this I listen to the most. Right. Oh, so it came with the actual CD? No, I'm, I got a hold of it my way. Right. Okay, so my point was going to be that, because I, I never got into the Guitar Hero games, but like, is there like a jukebox mode in that game where you can just hit a button and listen to the song without playing it? No. Okay, so every time you're hearing the song in the game, you're missing certain stems, right, because you have to be playing or performing that part of it? Because it was also in band, uh, a rock band, as well, Future Games. Mm -hmm. so, I suppose that yeah, might I mean, be true, yeah. So, so what I'm so saying is... If you do it wrong. Yeah, so what I'm saying is it's just the stems that exist in the game. And I know for a fact it says on the Wikipedia... I read the entire Wikipedia page for this article earlier today, right. which was a large Wikipedia article. Because yes. there was a lot of stuff it had to say. But they were saying that they sent the, the tracks, the stems for the game... To Harmonix, which is the name of the company that made Rock Band Guitar Hero and all those things, before the mass the files were sent to Ted Jensen or Jensen to be mastered. So the yeah, files so they have mastered stems. so you're hearing unmastered stems that were probably mastered okay. to an extent by the Harmonix team in those games. Right, because they would need. I mean, it's got to be mixed for the game. You know? Correct. But yeah, but I don't know if it was necessarily mixed, mastered or whatever, and it was never officially right. released to my knowledge. So I mm. found references to three different 
versions that were like titled by by the name of the person who released the mix back at the time and it was like hmm. guitar hero my like guitar hero pogo mix guitar hero like meat man 72 mix or something like that i don't know if that's what the, i just made those two names up but that's what they were like huh. right and so they're just called and so i found reddit threads of people de- like debating which of those mixes was the official version and then at, up, at to a up at at a certain point, the I mastered for iTunes version is the definitive best v- mix. And huh. that is what we're going to be listening to in this I'm video. I'm very curious which version and I, I have. I think this is probably the first time Chris Parker and Chris Schoenberg will be hearing this exact mix. Mm-hmm. We think. We think. We don't know. And maybe it would be negligible, the difference between all of these. But I'm pretty sure we will notice a difference between this and then what we're going to listen to for the entire album. Yeah. And I was going to say, I, that's, I can get. A song from the Guitar Hero 3 version I have. I don't know whose version that is. I'm not sure, but and we can compare it to see what the difference is. I've always thought that the vocals in my Guitar Hero 3 version seemed a little low. So it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes yeah, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. I don't know like what they used. I, I'm, I'm assuming they just still had access to the stems that they sent over to the two harmonics. Mm-hmm. And that Metallica just go back and get those unaltered stems. So we'll just have to see. I don't know. But to me, this is all very interesting. There is not very many cases throughout music history where something came out and was so bad it had to be remastered only years later. Right? Most of the time, mm-hmm. bands release an overcompressed album and then they pretend that it's not overcompressed. Metallica's groundbreaking. There, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Metallica's great. And part of the reason for that is that every once in a while they just lay a hot turd. The hot turd, yes. <laughs> so, so, yes, but I do think it's relevant and I think it's important to talk about. And since we're here to talk about the production, I'm very excited to listen to this with all of that that we just discussed in mind. One other last thing I have to say about the specific Guitar Hero versions. Did you know this, Chris? But in one of the Guitar Hero games, first of all, it made me laugh that when that DLC came out for Guitar Hero 3 or whichever game it was, Mm -hmm. uh, on the Wii, the Wii could only fit three songs on the Wii at one time. So you only got the three shortest songs that are on here. I just saw that a little bit ago. You had to buy a specific disc later on to have all of the content, (sighs) which is so funny to me because because Nintendo is so stupid and they suck. But um, I don't know about that. (laughs) No, they do. the opinion of everybody in this room. Nintendo's (laughs) never released a good video game ever. Don't at me. Or feel free to at me. That's insane. That's insane. Hashtag Zelda sucks. But... Uh, the reason I bring that up is because there is one of the songs, it's the last song on here, so it'd be My Apocalypse. There were two different versions released for the Guitar Hero game, one with a Kirk Hammett solo and one with a James Hetfield solo, and you could mm-hmm. pick which one you wanted to play in the game. So do you remember that, Chris Parker? Cool. I did not ever play this version. Okay. I never get the, the Metallica DLC. Okay. But I did read that, and I thought that was really neat. I mean, first of all, how many times has that ever happened in the music, the history of the modern right. music business, right? Where it's a band would release a song with just a, two different members of the band doing a guitar solo for that song. And that's interesting. That's because pretty awesome, I, have, I think. And I'll I've bet James had, is better. <laughs> Probably a lot more I've rhythmic. I've always had both versions on this Guitar Hero 3 mix that I've got. Or not okay. this mix, but the Guitar Hero 3 version of this album I have. There are all, there are two. Okay. And it says right in the title, featuring Guitar Hero Guitar solo James Hetfield featuring guitar solo Kirk Hammett. But I didn't know that because I'm in my car that doesn't show that much of the, the title titles. Thing. Sure. Um, and that's really neat. And I have always wondered why I had two in here and I didn't really think much of it. I was like, eh, well, I added one from something else. Who cares? Whatever, whatever. Sure. But the one with the now- law is Kirk. <laughs> yeah. The one with the law. <laughs> yeah. So, so for anybody watching the video who didn't know that, if you care enough, we're not going to mess around with any of that. If you care enough to know that like there's versions of My Apocalypse with different guitar solos in them, I'm sure you can just go look that up on YouTube, find the different versions. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to do that. That's I think that's really cool Actually, that Metallica did that. That is not the right song. I have I could be wrong. I thought it was My Apocalypse because it's the shortest song on the album, I think. It's Suicide and Redemption. Which is the oh, okay. instrumental at the end of the album. Okay, before the the last track. 
The last track is My Apocalypse. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So then, Suicide and Redemption would be the 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 not the nine minute fifty eight second instrumental song. You jerks, wasting our time <laughs> for nine minutes. Remember, but, they but had we'll to throw there. it back to who what they used to be, and Correct. it was like, how Correct. can they be an old Metallica album without an instrumental right. at the end? So so let's get into what I read a little bit about the recording of this album. So they started writing this album in two thousand and six, and what happened was they ended up just sort of like for Saint Anger. They did exactly what we talked about, which if you haven't watched all of our St. Anger additional content, go back and watch those. But their approach for this album was going to be that they were just going to go into the studio and do what they had done since the Black album, which was go into the studio with no ideas and basically craft the album as they're recording. So jam for a while, find riffs, put them together, create the bed of the song mix it all together, write the lyrics for over the top of that, right? That that was going to be their plan for this because that's how they had done Load, Reload, and Sane Anger. However, yeah. once they got Bob Rock out of the, pro- out of the process and brought mm-hmm. Rick Rubin in, yep. who was a producer for this album, Rick Rubin was like, no, you are going to write the songs However you write them, go into studio, write them that way. But when you go to record the album, you are going to know these songs inside and outside, backwards and forwards. You're going to have lyrics written for them. You're going to have the entire song ready to go. And when you go into the studio, it's going to be more like a regular gig. And we're just going to record you doing it hmm. till everything is perfect. Cool. To which, to, to that I say, welcome to what it means to record an album if you don't have $40 billion to rent space <laughs> in an album. Because that is how every band who is just starting has to record their albums. Mm. I worked at a recording studio for many years, and when a band would come in and they didn't know what the hell they were playing, it was the most frustrating thing in the world. That is not the purpose of a recording studio, at least if you're not going to like spend the millions of dollars to have people live with you in the studio and basically record you on your whim whenever you want to. So, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, I'm so curious to hear this because of everything we've been talking about, but so they went into the studio, they recorded this album. It still took them a year. They started in, I believe 2008 and ended in, I think in 2009, this came out in when 2010, no, this album came out in 2008. 2008. So they went in late 2006, I think, and then recorded till, 2007 and then it got pushed back again later it doesn't matter i read again whatever you can go read the whole wikipedia page yourself if you're that interested in it but i just want to let you know i did my research on this i think it's really interesting i didn't really read anything specific in terms of like production like how anything was recorded um but i do know that there is a deluxe edition of this that comes with the bonus disc of every one of the songs just being demoed out in the studio Uh, Which I would be very curious to hear because some of these Metallica albums, like when I go back and listen to Master of Puppets, I've occasionally gone to the Spotify page, found the deluxe edition of the album and listened to a few samples of like the Master of Puppets demo that they were that they did. And I think the demo sounds sonically way better than the all the terrible reverb drenched version, the final version. Huh. You know what I mean? Like there are I'd love all, to hear that. That's yeah, there's, interesting. There's like multiple different versions of some of the songs from Master Puppets and Ride the Lightning and Kill 'Em All on these deluxe editions. And they're just these nice dry in studio recordings, but they're not cool. perfect, which is why, you know, they've only been released mm-hmm. now that Metallica's huge and obviously wouldn't have been released back in the day. So I would be really curious to hear the demo disc of this. And the, it also came with a second uh, or a second bonus disc, which was a DVD including a a documentary on the making of the album, which I'm with footage of them in the studio making it. So if anybody's seen any footage of that, feel free to let us know in the comments any techniques or anything you see them talking about or whatever, because we have had so many people talking about how they recorded Saint Anger because of the documentaries and different things that they released on their fan page at the time. They were releasing like web updates from the studio at the time, and so people have been talking about those that you can go find on youtube i think now that like literally shows them arguing about like how lars wants to use a specific snare and um bob rock is like no we're using this one and them all fighting about stuff which i think that's part of also some kind of monster the movie right probably so anyway anyway i know i'm talking like a whole bunch and i want to get to the music but i feel like this stuff is really interesting and i just wanted to get it out there i think that it's interesting that people like all that I, stuff yeah that's so what much. they're probably here for you know well yeah I, I, no oh I, I meant like that people are so like, like interested they care about in the in, the in the in the like because there's all these stories like right going back to the early days of rock and roll with the beatles and 
I mean, there were some interesting technical things about the Beatles. Like, oh, let's put the mics close to stuff and see how that works. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, wow, right, good job. Right. Was that Glenn Johns? Is that who that was? Doesn't matter. Anyway, broke the rules, put the mics close. That's pretty cool. But like like the stories about Ray, and I, I tell them too. Like, oh, Just yeah, well, uh, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant like go down by a creek with a acoustic guitar and mm-hmm. write Led Zeppelin too or whatever. And right. like that. Like, I guess it's cool, but, like, also from a recording aspect, like, it is just people going to work. And I was <clears> trying <throat> to think of something while you were talking about that, which mm. would be, like, would I rather dig ditches all day or would I rather have to, like, pay attention to a band jamming for, like, 8 or 12 hours a day and, like, pay enough attention to know what's going on? Yeah. By the time you were done with that, like, how many how – many how many people do they have doing that? Yeah. Like did like one guy like work one day a week and they had like five engineers and like they had it. You go, you drive yourself nuts. Oh, and not only that, they went to multiple studios and did it over the course of a year, like multiple years, like for St. Anger, they did it in different studios. I don't even care what with band different instruments. If you're not in it. That to would me, be, that would see, be now, terrible. I understand what you're saying, but to me, I love that. I would sit there for 12 hours of the band and I would be like that. Play that again. Yeah. Do I'm that with again. You on that. Do that again. And, and no, but that's let's the just producer. Get it a few but there has to be somebody there hitting record. Well, that's not hard. You just hit record. And but the, when you're yes, I understand what you're saying. And the way they did San Anger was really stupid. But that's not the way that they did this. But to me, what you just described, I hate bending over. So digging a ditch would be the worst thing in the world for me. <laughs> So, so to me, the idea of sitting in a chair and like focus listening for a, an entire day on what a band for is a doing. a year. Well, you're right. There would definitely be fatigue. And I'm sure that that's why there's everyone would get mad at each other and everything. But I think, and I think one of the things that's that did. That's probably why. That is probably more the thing about some kind of monster than the drugs or the alcohol or whatever. It was because like, <laughs> I'm no, sure that exacerbated sat here it. for a thousand years listening to the same stupid songs over and over again. Yeah. Well, well what I was going to say was. They had around 50. I like St. Anger. Go back and watch the video. They had around. Yeah, it was shocking. They had around 50 relatively full length songs structured out before they actually went in the studio to record Death Magnetic. And so Rick Rubin helped them narrow it down to 25. And then they, they officially narrowed it down to, I think, 17. So they went into the studio and they recorded, I believe, all of them. And there's what, 11 songs on here? Mm hmm. 12, 13. 12, 13, 10, 11. There's 10. Yeah. There's 10. But then they also released the EP in 2011 called Beyond Magnetic. Yes. Uh, where they released four additional songs. And I want us to react to that too, but that will be in a whole separate video on a different day. I don't think I've ever heard that. Awesome. That's great. I haven't either. <laughs> Who would have thought? Surprise. I have heard them. It's been a long time. I what think are the well, names at least of the songs? One. Look them up, Chris Parker. Yeah, look them up real quick. I know one of them. <gasps> One of them, the first track on that, on that is the very first bit of new music that they played on tour after St. Anger. And so people heard it and they just refer to it as the new song because, of course, everyone records everything Metallica does live. And Which, by the way, on their website, you can go and buy the, a double disc set of every show they've done for this tour. Remember? That $25. Guy who made a list of all of his favorite songs? Yeah. Hate Train is one of the Beyond Magnetic songs. There you go, and you didn't remember that that's what it was, but you have heard it. Nope. I have heard it. I know I've heard it at least once, and I know one of them that I remember thinking, this song is pretty sweet. But the rest of them I remember thinking, yeah, I can see why they cut this. So what are the four songs? Four songs are Hate Train, Just a Bullet Away, Hell and Back, and Rebel of Babylon. I don't think I've heard it. Okay, so Just a Bullet Away was the first song that they performed in part live after St. Anger that was like new music. Mm. And- and one of the riffs from, riffs from that song got taken and put into a different song on this album, and I don't know which one it was. Oh. Um, but what what ended up happening was then, yes, they ended up having, I think, 15, or seven, 15 to 17 songs. They went in the studio and recorded them exactly the way they had them planned out. I think... The the they kind of just demoed out the songs for Beyond Magnetic. I don't know if they actually like officially went in and did that later or anything. I'm not sure the the story of that exactly, but those are all from the sessions for Death Magnetic. So it should sound similar. But I would be really curious how those songs were mastered, right? Because up until recently there was only this version of this album, and so mm-hmm. if the Beyond Magnetic was recorded at the same time but mastered better, that's really interesting to me. 
And I want to know what happened to those other 25 songs. Well, I think what happened was they just, you know, they recorded them and they're sitting somewhere uh, just as demos. And then I think what they do when they get ready to go in and record Hardwired and 72 Seasons is they probably go back and listen to some of that stuff. Maybe not 72 mm-hmm. Seasons because I know they wanted to kind of like reset everything for 72 Seasons. But I do know but that... also, again, yeah. on like these things getting maximized, these like, you know, what snare drum was used or where did they record this guitar solo or... I mean, what it's was not the temperature ju- in the and room? It, right. And it's not just Metallica. <laughs> like, you no. know, there are other bands like that. Metallica, but it's like a big band. So big it's a big bands. deal. Yeah. But like everybody that writes songs or plays guitar has tons of riffs. Like my hard drive is full mm-hmm. of crap from... 2008 and beyond. Yep, me too. Or from before that. I have whole songs. Just whole songs that and are like, sitting there that no one's ever heard. nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like, they don't matter. Like, you, ha- if you're going to write good songs, you also have to write stuff that, like, you have to try. Yeah. And it yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the first... There's such a huge period of time when you are starting, when you, especially when you like get into a new thing, where you just have to make garbage for like oh yeah months. And, I'm, I th- <laughs> and I definitely don't want to like make it seem like Metallica had 50 Metallica songs ready. I would guess yeah. that they probably had like 50 ideas for songs, riffs mm. for each one of them. But somewhere it's, but somewhere it's like that, and you yeah. hear stuff like that yeah. too. Like oh, did you know that Metallica wrote or blah blah? blah that there's like. And some people do do that. I heard this cool thing. I wish I, I got to remember where it was. It was recording some big pop artist album and they talked about the process of it. And I didn't really know all this. Mm. And so mm. it was like, it was like somebody like Rihanna or Beyonce or something, some big pop star. And so they talked about how they Rihanna. did this. And they had like 40 producers, let's say they Beyonce. had like a number like that much. Bianna. They split yep. them. They split them into groups, yeah. like ten teams of four or whatever, and they all had a few songs, and then like you know, like a process of elimination to come up with. Mm-hmm. And like those other songs that got dumped from that were probably actual probably songs, pretty good. Yeah. and they probably just got turned on to another artist yeah. or you know, however mm-hmm. they got released. But like to say that a band, be, like of course James Hetfield has riffs. Oh. Kirk Hammett lost an entire folder. I think no, he had his phone. He he's talking. I don't remember when this was, but he had he recorded a bunch of riffs into his phone. You know that's how he does it. And he I think he either lost his phone or had it stolen or something, and uh, lost all of those riffs that he had saved. That's crazy. But like good. That's just how it good. Works. I mean, yeah. for anybody, good. If you lose, if you can't remember it anyway, like, yeah, I'm, it wasn't I'm, good I'm not like trying place. to trash on them. But for anybody, yeah. if you lose your folder of like crappy riffs, good for you. Just write new ones. You're never yeah. gonna go back and look at them. Yeah, and if it and if it and if you're playing something and you're like, oh, this reminds me of something I've done before, then the good stuff might come back to you. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And 100. Uh, I have. I keep hoping that with this YouTube channel, I become so famous that I can release like B sides. Not that I've ever released any A sides, but like B sides. <laughs> you know, in like five, ten years, I'll be like, here's all the stuff I made between 19 between 2008 and 2010, 2010, 2015, 2015, 2020. You know, and then people can like pay me all this money for all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because... But there's a Maybe there's funny a lot, to, like there's a lot of stuff like, Chris is on. Bag. It'd be funny to like sandbag as an artist and like just only release like take all your worst music and then just release that and like that's your catalog over the years and then later you get famous you're like all right here's all the a sides here's all the good (laughs) versions of everything I made I've already (laughs) done all the work here's all the good stuff right like they talk about that with Prince that was the big one right like Prince has got a whole vault full of entertainment that'll last us for all the rest of our like Kevin Smith was talking about that Kevin Smith's a big Prince fan yeah Hmm. and like it's junk. It has to be junk. Probably. Otherwise, why wouldn't it have been put out? I, I know. Yeah. I mean, and, but that's the thing. Somebody's going to like it. Somebody that's true. is. And if you're that's really true, into the person that much, like if you're yeah. a super Uber fan, I get how it could be interesting, but that doesn't mean it's going to be good. Yeah. There's always Uber fans. Um, okay. Let's change tact here because we're already 40 minutes into this video. Are we going to listen to Prince now? I just print. No, I, I've never heard a single. Uh, the only Prince song I know is, is When Doves Cry. Same. I think, think, and I know I've heard Purple Rain. I know Purple Rain. I know Purple Rain. Yeah, Purple Rain. What about Little Red Corvette? I've never heard a single other song. Raspberry Beret? No, sir. There's probably other songs that have colors. What about Party Like It's 1999 or Kiss? Heard that. Oh, man. Kiss, Kiss, Oh, I know. I've I've heard that. I just want your. Yeah. 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 I have heard that. (laughs) It's good. That's not really my. I have a very similar relationship with David Bowie where it's like, yeah, I've heard. I know none of his the, music either. The space one. David Bowie yeah, is the space one. <laughs> see, and I have I've, I know I've heard Major Tom, 
And mm-hmm. other than Major the Tom, one. the only D- Dr- David Bowie song I know is the one from uh, the Underworld soundtrack, which is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time, called uh, The Return of the Disco King. And it's a remix that Maynard from Tool did. So it sounds as high fidelity as possible. Cool. It's phenomenal. Uh, hmm. Probably way better than the original version. But yeah, that's the, those are the only two David Bowie songs I know. Which there will be David Bowie on my channel coming up because my cousin Cody is going to, we're going to do a David Bowie album together. Hmm. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. If you guys want to join us, Onward, for that, let me know. Perhaps. Um, Maybe. So I do want to mention just real quick because I thought it was more fascinating than any other time I've read about this in Metallica. The artwork for this album. I just think is phenomenal. It's awesome. I love, very, very, very cool. love the artwork for this. So On the packaging mm-hmm. specifically. Yeah, but also like the uh, it was Lars' decision. Um, he had some guys who were buddies of his that were like starting a new sort of graphic design company or something. I think at the time, and he just said like, "Here's the songs we're working on. Listen to them and then come back to us with an idea." And. Uh, there were originally two ideas for it, something about some suicide and darkness or something, and then death magnetic. And it was James because he had it as a lyric, I think, in one of the songs. And these guys came back with this sort of idea. And James was like, oh, I like this. Let's go with death magnetic. They left, came back and came with this. Now, I was looking at this and I did not realize this, but maybe you did. But these lines are supposed to represent magnetic fields. Yes. That is so freaking cool. I love it. And the idea. Oh, I figured it was just like. Like it's no, like it's iron filings. It is. It's like when you it's... put iron filings next to a magnet. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, I might have to look this up and read it because it was worded so eloquently from James. But he was saying that the idea that death is like a magnet. Some people are drawn to it, and some people it pushes away. In the case of your own mortality, and also people who are close to you, and when they die. Some people are really drawn to that with their emotions, and some people, like the opposite side of the magnet, push their emotions away. I was like, that's really deep and cool. That's really cool. Mm, That's great. I really like that. That's really cool. And then we pointed out before that this this album is the version that I have, which apparently this was released in like a digipack first. Yeah, I, so, have, I got the digipack. So I don't know when this was released. This maybe isn't the initial release then, but I have the version that has the... Ooh. Fell on the floor. That has the... the die cut. The die cut. So every song, it gets more and more like recessed into the... It's so cool. That's you cool. should just go buy it just for the artwork if you haven't already. It honestly is like it's so, so cool. badass. And it it works all its way all the way down to this like just coffin. And one of the things I love the most about it was they specifically wanted the theme of the album to be as white as possible. Because at the time they were like, metal is so dark. Everything in the metal genre is black. And he was like, we don't need to. It doesn't need to be that way. So we're going to make it black or white. And also this specific image of the like mostly white and then the coffin digital music was starting to get more popular in 2008. And the guy sold them on the idea to have this for the front because this is a very easily recognizable image if it's very small. For like a for a thumbnail or something on iTunes. That's pretty easy. So they like legitimately were thinking about that stuff at the time, and I think that that is just so cool. One thing I love about this though too is like the lyrics to the song just like straight up get cut off by this. Yeah, that is so cool. I I love it. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in on that enough for you can see, but yeah, really cool. All right. Well, this album's long as shit. So Any, let's do it. Anybody got anything else to say no. about it before we listen to it? Doesn't matter. Not saying it. Let's get started. <laughs> All right. We can talk about it as we go, too. Yeah. All right. So, again, I want to reiterate, we are going to be listening to the 24-bit FLAC files right from Metallica's website. Dude, I like this album. I'm it's good, man. about this. It is good. Let's let's hope when you it. let's hope when you both yeah, hear it. Yeah, I know. Let's it's hope when you while. both so, hear. Yeah, we're doing the iTunes version first. Correct. Cool. And then we're gonna pick a song yeah. somewhere, and then we're gonna listen yeah, to the CD as we're version. listening. We'll just get to a song, and I'll, maybe my favorite song or whatever. I'll be like, or a song if you guys you, want. Um, I'll wait till we pick it. Let's just. You guys have mentioned all nightmare long several times. I think to me. Yeah, let's do that one. We'll just do that one. Yeah, that was gonna be. I was gonna say that. That's the one I kept landing on in my mind just because I know it the best because it's the best song on the album. (laughs) Oh, okay. It is the best song on the album. All right. First track, 
that was just your life. Oh, we didn't mention this, but this is from everything I know from people like this is apparently Metallica going back to their roots. They intentionally were trying to make heavier songs and get back to the thrashy sort of stuff. I cannot wait to hear what this sounds like. Unlike St. Anger, I have heard not a second of any one of these songs. Excellent. I have no clue what it sounds like. All right. That was just your life in three, two, one. Heartbeat. Interesting. Very conceptual. (gasps) Clean electric guitars. I didn't expect that. It would have been interesting to start with the acoustic. It would have been. Throwback to Master and Ride. Bass. I kind of forgot about bass. Ooh, that early 2000s guitar flangey. That's, yeah, that pure 90s. 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 Watery guitar. (laughs) Huh. I like it. It's weird that you guys think about that like that. <laughs> There's something compressors kicking in right there. Is the snare a little to the right? I haven't focused on that yet. Dead center. Now it is. I think it was to the right a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, you got a little triplet in there. A little thrashy a little again. A little thrash. Oh, we forgot to get our pop, which is probably frozen. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Do not like the way the kick sounds at all. I never think the kick should be higher frequencies than more higher frequencies in the kick than the snare. Like Vocals the, are a little low. They are a little low, yes. Mm-hmm. The riffs are so good. Yeah. Yeah, the vocals are low. Just like 72 Seasons. Man, that kick is horrific. I don't know. You can't even hear it half the time. The kick? Yeah. It's in there. I don't hate it. I think it's fine. It's a little I stick, slappy in this part. I stick my nose up to it. <laughs> Just be glad it doesn't sound like St. Anger. Yeah, I am. The guitars sound great. I think. I like them. I think I've liked other Metallica guitar tones better. I mean, this just this just gives me so many 72 Seasons vibes. They're really distorted. That is so, I love this part so much. I like the alternate hi hat. Are we gonna get any vocal overdubs at all this album? There's a little bit. There's whispers, but like, not like not like whispers, but like there was Some little of- stuff in there.
Whoa. That's weird. That was a weird, like, set of notes there. I don't know. Maybe it was just the tone. That was great. We haven't heard that for 10 years. <laughs> it's growing on me. I didn't say this at the beginning, but this is the album I've been looking forward to the most since we started. Just because I wanted to hear an album that was played and songs that were written similar to Ride the Lightning produced well. Or more modern, I should say. Not well, but produced with, without all the reverb. Also, remind me to pick beef with a commenter. A comment we got yesterday when this is done. Oh, there's some guitar harmonies. Dude, yes, that's great. Avenge Sevenfold. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. You're not supposed to be that guy, Parker. That's Patrick's thing. I don't know anything about Avenge <laughs> Sevenfold. said blasphemy during Metallica. Oh, <laughs> one sucks. <laughs> That's what James Hetfield was put on this earth to do, was to write those riffs. See, mm -hmm. I, again, this so is good. guitar player versus guy who listens to other things than guitars. I am so disappointed that the vocals are too low. Because the, the riffs only are good. Very just just, the riffs. It's so, yeah, it is, it's not much. I would say to me it is still within the acceptable pocket, but it is very much on the low, like, Almost as low as you could go within that po yeah, acceptable I would, I would pocket. Agree. I would agree. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not going to let that bother anything for me. And who knows? The next song might be totally different as we've learned anything from Metallica. <laughs> There's not necessarily guaranteed consistency in any regard. Okay, I'm going to go get... about... Hold on. Oh. Hold that thought. I'm going to go get our beverages. Okay. Oh. Oh. My buddy Conrad is watching Metallica right now. Yeah, that's right. Tonight's the show. No. He's there. In Texas? Yes. Huh. The, yeah. He just sent me a picture. He is at Metallica. I couldn't figure out. He sent, He put up a video earlier that showed Pantera, and I forgot that Pantera was opening for Metallica. Because yep. the set, I'm like, that's too big of a set for... Pantera. Huh, that's awesome. Yep. That's This is what we were going to be doing tonight. Yeah, that's better. This is better. I agree. Live Metallica. Give me a break. Is yours pouring? Oh, yes. Sweet. Yes. Full slush, baby. Full slush. Oh, yeah. I forgot. That's all right. But, yeah, that was... I was going to talk about that as well, but then I figured we've already talked about enough things, so... Was Chris here when you just said that? Or he was gone already? Oh, my buddy is at Metallica right now. Oh, he's not listening. My buddy is at I Metallica right now. He just sent me a picture of him at Metallica. Oh, because tonight is the show that, well, he is legitimately at, in Texas. He's at the show. That's, in Texas. At, yeah. That's the show that they're broadcasting to all theaters today. That's awesome, man. And I'm that's what we were going to be doing tonight, but we decided to forego that. And record this instead. So what I was going to say is that we have talked yeah. before about how there are three distinct eras of Metallica. Mm -hmm. And I think the newest era of Death Magnetic, Hardwired, and 72 Seasons is just the first era and the second era combined. Okay. All right. I mean, that's that excites me. The, the, I... I 
hearing that song and having that be the first moment of this album I've heard, it left me wanting for some of the 72 Seasons production. The kick drum, sure. the drums sound so much better on that than they do on this, minus maybe the hi-hat, which is, you know, crazy. But, like, this is so much more like we're a metal band and we can't use any fake production tricks, so we're going to, this is the snare drum sounds like what it sounds like. I don't. The kick I, drum sounds like what it sounds like. That I I think it's fine. I think that my beef with maybe the kick and the snare is that it kind of sounds like it's either fire up your comments about how Chris doesn't know how drums work. Um, that there's <laughs> that there's uh, it sounds like I don't know if this is what's happening, but it sounds like there might be distortion on those two tracks to make them cut harder. Oh, it could be because S- there's like some sizzle up high in the frequency top that distortion. I don't uh, that I don't could be. I don't necessarily love that. Also, there is something, and I just can't put my name on it or my finger on it, my brain on it. Um, the sound there's a there's a quieter part in that sa- song where you can hear James' voice, and it's very obvious then. That his voice is very compressed. Yes. And it has some grit to it. Just a little smidgen. Just a little hair. And there's a... I don't know what that piece of gear is, but that is a specific sound. And I, I'm i like... My light bulb goes off and says, that's a specific compressor. Maybe it's a distressor. Ah. Uh, or DSing. DSing of some kind. No. It's... No? Well, I mean, it could... It could, could be doing multiple things. It could things. be like a DSer, but yeah. like... But it would be a specific one. Anyway, it was interesting to me. I mean, why wouldn't there be? I thought his vocals reminded me a lot in terms of performance and the way they sounded, the way they sound on 72 Seasons. That's what I thought it was. Part of me wishes that we had, I hadn't heard 72 Seasons for so many reasons. You know, Load and Reload would have been so much more shocking had I never heard 72 Seasons. Because there are Mm -hmm. moments on 72 Seasons that kind of harken back to that. And this sounds to me sort of sonically similar to 72 seasons i think like you said there's more distortion on the guitars like the guitars are just more distorted the the right the distortion they're less the round gain is at like eight and it should be at six yeah i think it's Maybe. too there's yeah. too much high frequency yeah i do like the way the guitars sound on 72 seasons and you know i did read that most of the songs on this album were going back to standard tuning rather than some of the drop tuning which they had been doing on load and reload and san anger so that might be also a part of what we're hearing, but the riffs are so good. This whole record, it's so good. I, it, it's so good. Yeah, I'm so excited. All right, uh, track two, the end of the line. Interesting to have that be the track, second track on the album, and this is seven minutes and fifty two seconds long. Oh, we'll see you guys in eight minutes. Yep. All right, ready, Chris Parker. <clears throat> yep. Three, two, one. Immediately, I want to say the bass sounds better. Like the low frequencies in the mix already. Yeah, the bass sounds great. Compared to the last song? Yeah. Oh. I feel like the bass is way more present. There's a big bass note. And some like cymbal swells as well, which is nice. I mean, they, not that they don't do that very often. Yes. Hey, we got a little load and reload action going a little bit. Hell yeah. Except better. That remains to be seen, but yeah. There was like a little bit of like a fuzzy static on the side where the guitar, where everything wasn't mm. for a second. More and more, Vocals louder. Vocals are louder. Yep. Summit. You you go, Metallica. They heard me and turned it up. <laughs> They sound closer. Yeah. Now, can you guys tell this isn't the original master? 
I haven't heard it recently enough. There's no, but I'm not thinking about mastering. So, ooh, that was cool. Vocal dub, overdub there. Oh yeah! I always want them to have some of those children of Bodom things, and they never do it. You know the the shouts. I love that's like my favorite thing in metal music, and not enough bands ever do that. The shout gang vocal. Metallica has done it occasionally. Ooh. Love that. Do, 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 do. Kind of feels like the song's gotten thinner here just because I don't think the guitars aren't playing as low. I was going to say that in the first song. I think a lot of the low frequencies are coming from the guitar. Shut the hell up. The one guitar on the left is so obviously heavier, or like more than the other one. Like, oh, like so always. much more. That's yeah, like always, but almost even more than has been before. Oh yeah, and the hi hats back to the right, where well, well, the right yeah, side, right not the ish. right position, but the right side. Yeah, not the correct position. Right, the the right side. <laughs> There's, there is no, no low frequencies in his voice at all. It is all 800 hertz and above. And then it doesn't go very high either. Like no. it's, it's, it's a narrow band, yeah. Your brain wants... There's harmonics up there that you're not hearing. It's missing definition. Yeah. It doesn't sound bad, though, I don't think. No. Oh, I love that. But down, down. Ooh. James leads. Yeah. Let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Transitions are so good. <laughs> it's like he, it's like his guitar farted before he started the solo. Oh, it's your sign to shut up. Dude, that's heavy. Huge. Awesome. Dude, there was some music theory stuff going in there with the chords, right? They are the the I mean everything is music theory, but like the <laughs> the notes that they were the the notes they were going to were not what I thought they would be doing. I guess it felt like they were stepping up a little further with that palm muted part. Yeah. And that always to me is like, hmm, a music theory there a little bit there. But that's just because I'm so dumb. Drop. They should do stuff like this more often, I think. I love this. I love this stuff. The slave becomes the master. 
This couldn't have been right off Black Album, right? Like the slave becomes the master. Dude, I love this. This yeah. is great. This is bleeding me stuff. Yeah. Are they gonna do the chorus of the song again or not? Oh, I love these. This I like the guitar riffs on this song a lot. Even that was interesting, the way he did that all nasally there. I didn't at the end. remember that. That's, that's cool. That cool. I like that. I mean, that's a, that's cool. That's a unique thing. Um. Okay, so. For, okay, one thing I want to say first of all that I forgot to bring up there is. We had a comment yesterday. Someone commented something about when I mentioned in one of the videos, probably uh, Ride the Lightning. I was like, oh, guitar harmonies or something like that. I was like, oh, guitar harmonies. I didn't know Metallica did that. This guy then said, oh, Metallica, they do more guitar harmonies than any other band. <laughs> I responded. I was like, uh, no, they don't. No, okay. They we just had albums like in a row. Years, yeah. We just had albums in a row where there weren't any guitar harmonies whatsoever. Maybe a little bit of things here and there, but not like the solo of Ride the Lightning, right? Which is just Man. like insane. And the only song I've gone back and listened to on that album since then, because every time I hit that part, I'm like, what is this? When they're just going, blah, 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 it's like amazing. And the, the the harmonies like really add to it and are sound impressive and are great. So like any other band, that's really where you went wrong, guy. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but my my response was like, "Dude, In Flames is like known for their guitar harmonies up the wazoo, all over the place, incorporated in like almost every riff that they do." Like, and plus, I I'm, they're called guitar harmonies. Guitar harmonies. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's that's better. That's just as good as what was it, uh, Rianse? Yeah, Rianse. <laughs> um, I love okay, a good port. Okay, so that so that song. I think I definitely liked it better than the first one, but I think it was maybe uh, right away when it first started, I was like, the, the low frequencies sound better here to me. And I think that's mm -hmm. because at the beginning of the song, what they were playing on the guitars was a little lower, maybe. And because I, I was going to mention this in the first song and then I didn't. I think a lot of the low end that we're hearing is still coming from the guitars, a la mm. Justice. Yeah. And I think the bass guitar is, is not as prominent. The bass and was really prominent in the first song. I don't think so. At the beginning, it was. Yeah, at the beginning. I mean, when you just like, hear the bass playing by itself, yes. Effect. But like, sure. <laughs> but, but like, uh, yeah, I I think a lot of the low frequencies in the songs are coming from the guitars, which is why in this song and even in the first song too, when they play a section where they're both playing higher on the guitar, the song feels a lot thinner. I noticed that here during one of the parts I specifically mentioned that it. Yeah. You know, and that's just how it is. That's how it works when you mix an album like this and it's more like what you're seeing is what you're hearing rather than like, why don't you just overdub those guitars there, James, <laughs> and then play this other part over the top of the parts that you have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I, I that was one of the reasons that that tells me that the bass isn't like super... The, the low frequencies aren't all coming from the bass because if that was the case, when the guitars are playing higher up, it wouldn't feel like low frequencies are missing from the mix during that section. The bass would still be plodding along at the frequency range that it had been the entire song. So, so there's that. I think the vocals were a little bit more prominent in that song, which I think helped me a lot. I was getting mm -hmm. tons of load vibes there, Chris. Do you agree? Mm-hmm. Just oh, yeah. that I, I, I was mentioning when we were listening to load and even reload too. I would be like, that's like a twangy riff. And I don't know if people necessarily got what I was saying, but I got that feeling here too. Like it felt like almost like a twangy sort of riff. And, um, I, I really liked that. I liked the like lead riff of this song a lot. 
I thought that was really great. So definitively for me, I would say track two, I like better than track one, but it was fun to hear the like fast triplets and stuff in the first song, but I didn't, the drums didn't bother me as much here. So maybe my ear is just getting a little bit more used to it and we'll see as the album goes on. So the the overheads are unbelievably thin. Yeah. They're very thin and they're not very wide. And yeah, like they're just, just like nothing there. It's just you. You want to say anything, Chris Parker? Do you no. want to look up what these songs are are about? By the way, or do we no. care? Sure. No, I, no, I don't know. All right, you heard it here. He didn't want to hear it. We talked for like an hour before we started listening mm-hmm. to the music. We we know what this song is about. The end of the line. They're getting off the train. They reached their yeah. destination. Train it's ride. A blue, it's a blues song. Train ride. Yeah. Yeah. The originally hate train. Came before this, and it was a two-parter where you ride the hate train and then you get off. <laughs> <It was> a- <laughs> yep, yep, that's exactly it. I think I remember that now that you said it. From Trains the do <laughs> traditionally run off gasoline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a line to the song. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if you're being now. I don't know if you're kidding or not. <laughs> that is, that's the chorus of the song. The only you part burn of the, through all your the gasoline. only the only oh, lyric yeah. the only lyric I heard in that song was the end of the line. That's the only lyric I noticed at all. Never paid attention to the lyrics one other single second. <laughs> I should maybe try to do that. I'm just listening to the music, I'm trying to feel it's the good. music, man. Just trying to feel the music, man. Um. Uh. Okay. Let's just move on to broken beat and scarred. Which I think is also the name of a good Charlotte song. So this might be a good Charlotte cover. It is. That better not be true. <laughs> I don't think it's true. I just made that up. I made that up. I made that up. Uh, okay, broken, beat, and scarred. In three, two, one. Listen to that tom. Yeah. Boom. This is very black album. Oh, I wouldn't say the main riff is. It's just, just that the part. Background. Yeah. They're definitely like pushing that snare drum to its limit. Like whether it's with some distortion or something like you said, like, yeah, it's the, the volumes of things are still changing here quite a bit during the different parts of the oh, song. Oh, for sure. Like there in the last one, there were snare hits that were just snare yeah. was down here, and then two hits are high. Yeah, and like, I yeah. Mean, duh. Interesting. Reverb on that vocal. And delay is like it's. Yeah, yeah. The reverb was sticking out at the end of phrases on the last one, too, like in a little bit of a like, huh, kind of way. I like this part. Ooh, that's cool. That's a cool line. We die hard. And you want to pull that leg out just to make sure that it's... I feel like the table's wobblier than it usually is. I don't want it to fall over. Would that be hard to do, that, like, really fast little thing? Yeah, because that's incredibly fast. And it's rhythmic.
what don't kill you make you more strong? It's yep. kind of stupid. Doesn't it it's make gotta you stronger? fit the rhythm. What don't kill you make you more strong? Okay, yep. Tarzan. Doesn't more strong and stronger mean the same thing? It's improper grammar. What don't it kill you make you more strong? You're more strong. Come on, James. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, and that's not the beat I thought was going to go over it either. I'm really noticing the choice of drum beats over every section. You can tell they planned it out, and it wasn't just jammed, you know? Is he going to do anything other than just a pattern and repeat it the entire time? Why? Okay, he's doing a little more here. So they're adding reverb and effects to those notes. That's kind of nice. They're overdubbing. Dubbing. Yeah. Little music theory going on there. Yeah, yes. That's a great Metallica transition there. They remind you what song you're listening to, but they don't quite do it, right? Yeah. Like I just wish the vocals were louder. It's a bummer to me. But like, I get it. But there's a huge hole for him. Yeah, but to there's me, a hole in the spectrum and the stereo field, and there's a hole in the frequency spectrum too. That just like they're not, they're not quite loud enough. I would agree, but it works. Dude, that's a cool line. Are we going to need the fade out board? I don't even know where it is. I haven't used it in so many videos. No need to worry. I just got a feeling that we might get a get a fade out there. Nope. Okay. Did you so hear any of it? Any of what? The song. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Here's here's <laughs> here's the thing I keep. Here's the thing. It just really pisses me off that I have to sit here and debate whether it sounds good to me or not. When the f*** is Metallica going to pull their head out of their asses? They are the biggest band on the planet. It really is just starting to frustrate me that they insist on making everything as difficult as possible. Just, just make... <laughs> I swear to God I could make a metal album that sounds better than this. I would have to cheat and use modern things. Like everybody else does. But the things that were available in 2008, How is that cheating? which is what oh, my equipment is from, that. my equipment that <laughs> I use to make music nowadays is from before this album was recorded. It just is so frustrating. I know. Come on! <laughs> like, I, I would love this so much more if it sounded... It sounds good. It doesn't sound bad, but I think that's only because the bar has been set so low. No, Any other no, band releases an album that no. sounds like this, and you're like, what were they thinking? No. Yes. You might. You can't. I think this, this is the song that we should pull off of the album itself to listen to. Okay. Because that really hot, that really heavy, like, part where it's just everything's already, like, at the top anyway, that's going to get real crunchy. <laughs> okay. So do you want, do you, should we just listen to that right now? Sure. Unless there's any opposition to that idea. I mean, it's not a nine minute long song. We don't have that's to, true. We don't have to listen to the whole thing. That's true. Yeah, that's true. We don't have to listen to the whole thing. Okay, so that's track three. Let me go drop that into the file for you, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. 
You get it what does I'm, sound good. You get what I'm saying, though, right? I know. Like, it, is, it is stupid. You shouldn't even have to talk about the no, production on No, it this should stuff. sound better. And and I will say, I know, I understand, I understand, Chris. Like, for me, one of the worst things you could do as a band, short of, like, screwing something up so monumentally that, like, objectively, your, your album, your, the sound sounds bad, making the vocals too low is, like, the thing that bothers me the most. Yeah, I know be, you know, I can see it. Other Absolutely. other than other than someone like something just getting screwed up along the way, you know, like other than some really egregious, obvious thing like ha- having vocals too low can absolutely ruin a song or a mix for me. I ju- it just is so frustrating to me. OK, so that was the day that never. Broken, no, beaten, that was scarred. broken, beaten, scarred. Occasionally, I'm hearing. There's still like. That snare ring that was in Say in Anger is mm. in there, but it's so much less there. But it's there. And well, I, just, I think, I, I think you're. I think you're noticing it when the snare, the volume of the snare drum is turned up like five dB on those like hits, mm-hmm. on the stabs. Yeah. Because like we were saying, like I think it was. I think it was a little bit more prominent in the previous song, and I forgot. And I didn't. No, you did. You it, started yeah. to say it. That speaking of the drums, though, I just want to reiterate again. You really like I really can tell in listening to this that like the the almost on Saint Anger it felt like Lars didn't know what part he was supposed to be playing over any given part of the song. So he just kind of like picked something and just stuck with it for the duration of that part, which is possibly what literally happened if there are all these jam things put together to make mm. the album. This it really does feel like when they switch riffs, he's intentionally playing the a drum beat that either complements it or the times I notice it more is not necessarily the thing you would think would be played over that guitar riff. That's what thrash metal is supposed to be. I agree. And I think that there, the parts that are sounding thrashy or heavy, heavy to me are more because of what the drums are playing rather than what the guitars That's are playing. That's what thrash metal is supposed to be. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And and I just... That is nice. I feel like I really... Uh, even though I, I enjoy Lars just going... Because I like music like that more... Mm-hmm. This what he's doing just feels so much more Metallica e to me, and I really am enjoying that aspect of what he's playing. Other than the fact that I don't and the like songs care have for the way all the have a bajillion sound. parts, and they just do they different do. stuff with the dynamics and like. And they've been going back to the chorus, so like that helps me enjoy it a little bit more. I don't think they did in that song, but oh no, they did. Yeah, they did the the we die hard part. They did that three times. Okay, do you have the song pulled up, Chris? Okay, let me get this. So broken, beat, and scarred. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Well, okay, we got to go back to the other one, though, because now we talked for five minutes. I think we... You, you want to listen to the first minute of that one again, or what? What part are we going to... But no, we have to listen... Chris, where's that part in the song that you're talking about? Let's see. I'll find it. I want to just listen from the beginning, guys. No. Yes, I want to... No, I want to... right. He's right, though. About am I even going to be able to tell the difference? I want to just listen. Starts at two minutes. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning, and get through that part. Okay. We can. You can tell us. Okay. Okay. Ready, Chris? Yep. Okay, so everybody knows. Just to make sure, we are going to be listening to track three off of this CD now. Okay. Different master. Different master. Mm -hmm. In three, two, one. Wow! It's loud. (laughs) It's so loud. Am I gonna like this more? No. Chris, you sometimes get mad at me that I don't hear the overcompression. Are you serious? It's just distortion. I hear it. Hold on, hold on. Gross. Oh, yeah. This Ooh. is awful. Oh, yeah. This is terrible. That is terrible. That's something else, man. Oh, man. They released this. And they this, did. Is, this is the version that got that won Grammys. And that, the, and th- it's because the riffs are so good. There's like. I mean, in this big. See, this to me sounds good. This sounds okay, but it's still there's crunch over the whole thing. Oh, oh yeah. Bass sounds good in this. The bass yeah, sounds the bass the sounds better. Kick drum sounds better too. Oh, but it. Oh, but then there's that. The bass sounds great though. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can hear the actual you bass note. He's actually going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's oh. so bad. It's so bad. But that's that's just that's distortion on the snare though, right? Like that's not because of the mastering. It has to be because of the mastering. I don't. I think everything else would be distorting too. I, Disgusting. Those drums, man. That's like what you put like in a weird EDM song. Oh, yuck. But I think that's on the track. I don't think that's mastering. Otherwise, everything else would be that distorted too. No, it is all that distorted. Listen to His vocals aren't. That's why the vocals are low. Oh my god, it's disgusting. <laughs> Look at the meters. Let's keep going. Oh, man. There's the bass guitar again. Man, I almost wish it was like a medium, like between this and what we were listening to. Because I, I do... The, the bass sounds good. Yeah, the bass sounds... You can actually hear it. I think the kick just sounds better, too. It's really just the snare. I, no, it's the guitars, I, The guitars too. as well, yes. Yeah, Yucky, yucky. And the, the overheads are distorted. Gross. What don't kill you make you more strong. Shut up. Stop it. That's We're, a dumb we line. We heard it. It's wait. No, it's not. It's cool. Stop. All right, I, sto I stopped it, Chris. Like, I stopped plenty. it. That's terrible. Boy, oh boy. They That's released really that. Mm -hmm. I. Yes. Yes. Terrible. Unacceptable. But I the turned base, that the down. The bass does sound good. I like. I would rather listen to that. <sighs> I would rather listen to that 30%. than Sane Anger. Ew. No, I disagree. I would rather listen to that no. than Sane Anger. Nope. I think Bad Mastering is... Nope. Nope. Bad Mastering is like... Just really quickly, for those of you who don't know, because it will say in the title of this thing, Audio Engineers React or whatever it says, but it will say those swear words that I don't like, but we are audio guys here. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you make a record? I'm going to go over this very quickly is that you record all the stuff, like if you're recording a band. Like, you put microphones up, and you record all the stuff. Maybe the band plays together for some parts, maybe they don't. Blah, 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 blah. That's called tracking. Then there's this thing called mixing, where you decide how loud things are in relationship to one another, right? And you do a whole bunch of other stuff, too, of course. <laughs> Does he even know what EQ is? He doesn't know how drums work. Um, anyway, so that's, that's the mixing part. And so, like, when people call things remixes, which just drives me nuts, it's really unfortunate to me that that is the term that got used to, like, talk about completely changing, like, the background music of a song and just putting the vocals over it, and then that's what you originally, call it Originally, that's not what remixes were, but I understand what you mean. But colloquially, colloquially, the, colloquially now, remix means a whole new thing. Yeah, put a whole new backing track behind yeah. a vocal. So then, once it gets, once it gets mixed... That's just, I'm really generalizing this, but that's to make it sound good in the studio, which should also sound accurate, right? Then it has to be mastered for the for the medium that it's going to be released on. And that has changed a lot over time. Back in mm -hmm. the vinyl days, you had to master stuff to make sure, like for one thing, for example, to make sure that the needle did not jump out of the groove. If you put too much bass on a vinyl record, it's possible that the needle could jump out of the groove as you're playing it back. So you had to master it. You had to make that music, that mix, fit onto a thing. What happened, especially like in the late 90s up until obviously at least 2008, is that we did this thing with CDs called The Loudness Wars. You can go read about it forever. And the whole thing was to try to get your music to be as loud as possible theoretically at least so your song was louder on the radio than everything else so what you do to make it sound louder because obviously well i control the level of the volume in my car so what you do is you make the average level patrick's doing the thing by using compressors or limiters but the compressors or limiters are compressors and you make the average level go up. You can't make the peak any louder because on digital stuff you have zero. Zero is a hard limit. You cannot go beyond zero really. 
yeah, 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 you can't go watch YouTube videos about going beyond digital zero, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, so mastering, it's this whole thing, and like the guys that do it get paid lots of money, and they have big ears and fancy It things. is an art. It, it is an art, and it's a really important thing. It's something thing. that can be done very badly, and something that can be done really well. So there's the thing about mastering. That's what it is, in case you didn't know. It's very simplified. You can go to... a watch a bajillion videos or even better go to school or read and a I read, book. And, <laughs> and I read and I read online that T- Eric Jensen, I think or Ted Ted Jensen, Ted Ted Jensen, the name Ted of the Danson. Co- Tim Jensen. Tim Ted. I said Ted Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> he, he know who's the from who's the bar oh, no that's uh Remember I was that say, Billy Idol song Ted Danson with myself. No. Billy Idol? I don't know any Billy Idol. I was just making a stupid joke. Oh, anyway. sorry. Anyway, Ted Jensen, I believe, is the name of the guy who, or Jensen, I don't know, is the guy who mastered this album. And it says, there's a quote from him on the Wikipedia page as saying, the, al- the each, the tracks were, or it said the songs were brick walled before they got to me, is what he said. Well, yeah, that's fine. That and like, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to go blame him because who knows what he was up against. Exactly. And that's what I always but say on my channel. But the thing with Metallica. Know. Metallica. This is not some garage band that had 800 bucks to make a record. This is the biggest rock band in the right. world with unlimited money to do this correctly. Unacceptable. And it is unacceptable. They keep making and more, things and so people, hard. I paid smart people whose job it is to make this make money said that that was okay. And this album won three Grammys and was nominated for five. Because the riffs are so good. The riffs are so good. The riffs, riffs, the riff, riffs. A good riff does not a Grammy achieve. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It does. Pe- yes, it does. The, you think the gra- people on the Grammys care about riffs? Yes. You think they care about brick wall limiters? I don't think they care about <laughs> metal or heavy music at all. No, they just give it to Metallica. They didn't care. It didn't matter. Correct. It exactly. They invented the category for Metallica. They did invent it. And then, the and then they Jeff gave it Tull, to Jethro but... Tull. <laughs> right. We discussed that in one of our other videos. Yes. But, but, but anyway, yes, you're right. And I've talked about mastering a lot in other videos on my channel because when you hear an album that's been mastered incorrectly, the problem with that is you never know if the mastering is the thing that screwed it up. But you because do because you little. do to an extent to an extent. But the thing is, if if you're the mastering engineer and a guy sends you terrible tracks, you can only do so much, right? Yes. But if 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 you're the mastering engineer and someone sends you great tracks and you screw it up, you can always blame it on the mix. The mastering oh. engineer is the last person who always touches it, so they will receive the blame. It's a it's a double edged sword on that one. And some stuff sounds like it's not mastered. Like the what we've been listening to sounds significantly less compressed than the one we just heard. The other one was literally like audible distortion. Yes, it and, was. And like I, I had to, like I had wrong. to turn it down. Like my I had to turn my volume down like a third of the way from Same. what we were I listening went from to. Like eighty percent to fifty percent. Yes, exactly, oh, exactly, and so. And that is how all audio engineers measure audio levels and what percent their slider is on Winamp or iTunes or whatever. And That's we all we do. And we don't. Audience. We don't even need to ever anything uh, to avoid the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I measure my meters in the football fields per cheeseburger. <laughs> my <laughs> my dog. It's forty rods to the hog's head. <laughs> okay. On to track okay, four. Okay, track four, oh, The ten. Day That Never Came. Are you ready, Chris? This never was, comes. This was the never day comes. that never comes. This was their big, this was the single, the first single off this album. I can't believe Okay. That. The Day That Never Comes. It's seven eight and minute a single. Eight minute single. All right. So, hearkening back to the days of Master of Puppets. You ready, mm-hmm. Chris? Yep. In three, two, one. Okay. Nice little soothing part to start you wouldn't listen to this on the album version i wonder what it would have sounded like (laughs) (laughs) i'm uh, definitely gonna cut that out and make that a short zoom in on his face and add some coloring or something to it i may have heard this that was gonna say that sounds familiar to me surprised that sounds familiar to me but this was right at a time when i was not listening to the radio at all yeah, I was and listening this was to the before, radio all day, was, every day at work. This was before I started working at at Hastings when this came out. This came out the year before. Because once I started working at Hastings, I feel like I was a lot more cognizant of everything that was coming out. Uh, yeah. You know, and because I would see the stuff sitting there. Was that a piano? No. No, not yet. Dude, this is... um. 
Classical Gas by Mason Williams. This is a Mason Williams song. It's close. Yes. Oh, this, yes. is, this is one, too, where James starts on, like, the weird spot. Where it sounds like the verse is already yeah, going. Like, he, yeah. I, so far, this is definitely my favorite song on the album. This is awesome. Vocals are too low. Oh, it, oh, did they play this song on Symphony of Metallica? This was way after that. Symphony of Metallica Two, the one on PBS. It's just so disappointing to me because I like what he's singing. It's not. That bad. I shouldn't have to reach into the mix to pull it out. No, you shouldn't. It is a metal. Record. I know, that's true. And there is precedence for Metallica, for metal records to have the vocals low. Sometimes it does sound funny, though, like there, where he's, like, trying to, like, you can tell, like, he's getting louder and higher, and it's like, oh, you should hear that, and, like, no. Nope. Yeah, yeah. That's what, compressor. Chris Parker, have you noticed any difference between this and the version you've listened to all these years? Really? Not really. It's tough to tell, probably. That was a cool thing. Yeah. To I haven't listened like this with headphones. Mm. I don't even know How about know we when. turn the music back up? Oh, that would help, too. Idiot over here. I love this. These, these harmonies and melodies are so awesome. The drums don't necessarily fit with it, which is something that they were doing on Black Album. They're diff- but it's different drum sounds than was on the last song. Yeah. It's got that soft Someone needs to, to teach it. Lars how to play it quietly. You don't have to bash the drum at every drum as hard as possible. I think I've said that many times before. I don't know. Dude, those get that guitar part is epic. I love it. And it is very classical gas by Mason Williams. This song, overall, has a very one structure to it. I was going to bring that up, but I want to see where it goes. I was going to make a joke at the end. Well, confirmed better than one. But I could say that about every song we've heard so far. Do you think that snare drum sounds good? No, but I think it works. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. I like stuff like that. Sweeping rhythmic stuff like that. Are we going to get a guitar solo? And is he just going to go... Shut the hell up. You're just mad I I got it. No. Very much one, like, yeah. And this is the first time that there's really been, like, slop on those parts on this record. Yeah. Because yeah. that, that is sloppy. So cool. Yes, I agree. Love it. And notice how the rhythm guitars are still going on both sides. Yeah, I mean, you think that'd be the bass that would do that, but... Well, the bass is still going, too, but it would have sounded too thin. How do you do that? A 
love that how those guitars are too loud. Like you can tell, like this that is sounded like such. I, I love it. That sounded it's, like such a Primal Waters thing. Yes, it totally did. Dude, this is cool. Just this. Yeah. This is what they did on the first four good records all the time, and you hated it. I didn't necessarily hate it. I hate the way it sounded. Oh. Seventy-two C- Lux Eterna. He does that same run in Lux Eterna. The da 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 thing. You know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, era three. I like the dryness of it. This is awesome. This is good. This is like a little Irish jig. Hey, they should go, hey, between each other. <laughs> yes. They probably do live. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Ooh, that was heavy there for a sec. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That was. They didn't go back to the to the vocals. They ended with the instrumental. Yeah, they did. Love it. it. Was one two. Love which is it. which is very it's the, one. It's yes. The proper way to end the song. Yeah, I just really with was. That. It is such a spiritual successor to one. Like it's about war. It starts off chill with clean guitars, and it builds into this just this thing where they rock out, and then they never say another word past the half point of the song. Then just yeah. ended on the instrumental. And, the, part. and, and th- that is basically what they've been doing the whole time, except at the very end, the last like thirty seconds, they'll go back to some vocals, yeah. which I yeah. always vastly prefer. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked a lot of the melody that was happening at the beginning of that song, and then once it switched. I'm I'm just happy it didn't fade out because Metallica does have a history and stuff like this to just kind of fade out even if there's just a guitar solo still going you know when I went back and did try to listen to Ride the Lightning again that's exactly what happens in Ride the Lightning I've again I've only ever gotten past on uh, to track two when I try to re-listen to that album because Ride the Lightning I hate the intro riff the da 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 like I hate that which is interesting it's like one of the most yeah I I don't like that at all but then the guitar solo section of that song when it gets to it I'm just like my mind is blown it's so amazing and then they keep going and another amazing guitar solo starts and then the song just fades out and it just takes all the wind out of my sails and i'm like i have no desire to listen to the next song you've completely ruined it for me so i haven't been able to get past that point yet which is why i think chris parker and i still want to try to do a re-listen to that but in I terms just had of an interesting thought how dare they here's a thought <laughs> when bands play live a song that fades out on the album mm-hmm. You just what are they figure, doing? Just they just keep. They out. just repeat it a couple times, and then they do a little uh, retardando and do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they put that on the album; it'd be better than the fade out, you know. It's true. I agree with that one hundred percent of the time. I have said it of so many times; it doesn't even bear repeating. But fading a song out is lazy songwriting every time. Your song does not continue into the void and exist forever. It just poops itself to a death that makes I me want to not continue. I just don't know how to justify it. I, I want so bad to be able to find a way to justify it in a way that like benefits the artist, but I got to agree with you. There's just no reason to fade a song out. There's there's maybe only like, a, I would say if a song fades out and then the next song fades in, that at least makes like artistic sense to me. I don't I would think, think, at the very I don't think least, you should ever do that. Do it, but like artistically... You fade out the whole song except like one element, and then it just like kind of. But that's over. not a fade out. Yeah, right. But, but that's like that's as close to as you can get musically. Like yeah. you can right, mm-hmm. you can keep dropping you like not even the recording process, but in the musical process, mm-hmm. you can keep yeah. dropping out 
instruments. Yeah. And then at the end, like it's just an acoustic guitar slowly playing the riff. Yeah. And then you go, bring. Yep. And then it rings <laughs> out. And then it rings out for a while. And then the next and song then the starts. Next song starts mm-hmm. And that would be yeah. just, that would be and better. And then you get your next right. song. Yeah. Right. But we don't need to talk about that. I've talked about that on my channel for hours at a time. Um, I like that song, but I, do, I was disappointed in the second half of it. And I will say, I, I said this when we listened to Master of Puppets, the album, and I said it when we listened to Ride the Lightning. I don't think I felt it as much on Justice, but I really f- felt like the songs were a half a song, and then there was like two thirds of a, two different songs afterwards. Yep. And I don't care for that structuring. Yeah. To me, if they if they go at the end back to the beginning of the song at least and do the chorus or even a little bit, that helps kind of bring it all back home to me, which I think is why I've enjoyed the songs on this album before the one we just listened to a little bit more. Right? I they've done that every time except for this song. This is the first song that they didn't go back to any vocals at all. It is. So, for me personally, yeah. structure-wise at least, I like that. I really I think maybe my favorite moment of the album so far is the beginning part of the song we just listened to cuz I loved mm. the vo- the guitar part. I loved the vo- the vocal har- the vocal melody. I loved all that stuff. I think that in this kind of a song is the worst offender uh, and it's a crying shame to have the vocals too low. You know, if you're going to have a slow ballad song, even parts of it, that's when the vocals should shine. Especially because you got nothing to lose so, them inside of. Like at exactly. least you would have that as a reason. There's nothing pushing the vocal down, so it shouldn't be pushed down. But like you said in the last song, when he's singing more, singing out, you that's when you really feel like it's the vocals are being pressed down. You know, mm, interesting. So, sure. So all right, I uh, am going to grab a drink real quick. Okay, that's fine. All right, are you ready, Chris? I'm really excited to hear this next song. Yep, yeah, this is the best song on the album. This is one all right. So this is album. all nightmare long. Yep. You guys have mm-hmm. mentioned this <clears throat> to me. I think multiple times in other videos, like, "Oh, I can't wait till we get to all nightmare long." You guys have both said that, or one of you will say mm-hmm. it, and the other person will be like, "Yeah, yeah." Yep. So there better be all nightmare long. First of all, there better be something about this song that's different than everything we've heard so far, within reason. Uh, I don't think that hmm. you would say that unless it was like balls to the walls. At least during part of it. I don't, how long is it? Eight minutes, like everything else. Yeah, they're all, they're all eight minutes. standard Metallica length of a song. Let's just get into it and see what happens. Well, unless you guys are pissing around with me and it like fades in and fades out or something, and that's no. what you've been doing the whole time. I can't wait till yours all be, nightmare that long. Because <laughs> I've been excited for this. Because you guys mentioned this. Are you ready, Chris? Mm-hmm. All right, three, two, one. Bass. Very loud, but yes. I love that single note stuff when they do that. Ooh. Ooh, I love those toms. That's cool, too. But loop. Ooh. Dude, what an interesting thing. Yes, they're doing my load reload. <laughs> Dude, just a simple drum beat, right? Or it's, a, it's a guitar band. Yeah. Gosh. If I didn't know better, I would have said this is the instrumental song. We hunt you down with a mercy. Hunt you down all nightmare long. Feel us breathe upon your face. 
Dude, those are cool, like, chords or whatever. Right? Like, they're playing, like... Oh, yeah. There's, like, a... Little sour stuff in there. Yeah. Is he going one, two, three, four? Is that what's happening? Well, yeah, but it just goes two. Just, yeah, one, right, two. Right, but, but I didn't know if it was a word, like if he was going monster or something. Oh, no, I think he's just counting. There's a lot of playing on this song without the drum beat behind it. Because I keep finding myself doing this, and then all of a sudden, after like two measures, it stops. You know what I mean? And a lot of that. so obvious that this is the chorus yes you know like really obvious i love it this is there's load stuff in here a lot but it's faster and more aggressive Ooh, that was cool yeah Got Smacks back. Shut the hell up. <laughs> They're the only band to ever use Wah, and they did it way before Metallica even thought about using it. So don't just shut up. hell is he doing on the solos on this album? I love it. I love it so much. This is not the style of soloing that I like. I mean, it's cool for a little bit, but... Was that the... the whammy bar? Oh, cool. Those, the those chords... On the whole record. Those chords oh, from the God, chorus, so but... Good. They're playing like they're playing notes at like I don't know what you call it, but like there's more to what they're playing than just a power chord. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's cool. Hey, he got all the way that time. Yeah. <laughs> so this is probably a James solo. Oh, maybe not. That doesn't sound very good. Like the, the, the patch, like not the patch, the... Uh, it sounded better the higher it got. Whoa. Dude, this is cool, this is awesome. A little slop in the rhythm guitars. Dude, I love all these, like, ghost notes or whatever is in their chords that they're playing. There's so much more melody to it. Yeah, vocals, yeah! Yeah! Whoa, is that it? Oh, no, you just missed the best part! What, what did he do? You just <laughs> missed the best part! Well, I'm not looking. Oh! What, what, do they do say something or do something or what? Just gotta let it breathe, man. Well, I thought the song was over. I didn't want to lead into the next song. But hey, they're back at the chorus again, which I'm very happy about. Well, we'll go back and listen to it again. I want to finish the song first. Now it 
it's now it's over. over. Okay, so let's go back and listen to the best part. Hold on, Chris. We're listening to that quiet part or whatever. It was after this, right? Well, you started singing again. I love this. It's so good. I love this. All you wanted me to hear was silence? No, he breathes in. It makes it so (laughs) awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's my favorite part of the whole album. Did he say something about breathing in or something? Or Well... Chris made a joke about it, but no, he like the plays a part. It stops. He goes, <gasps> and then starts singing again. Well, and it, most just people cool, have man. to breathe before I didn't even they make sing a joke. I just one. said, let it breathe. I said, let oh. the song breathe, which but is funny because that's effectively that's, that's what's happening. The part but I'm, it's my that's like my favorite part. That is aw- that is awesome. I just you know I don't know. It sounded I don't know when the song's ending. We're not looking at that anymore. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just. Like, well, every so- every time I've stopped the song so far, we've heard the opening riff of the next song. That is true. So I'm uh-huh. trying not to do that. Well, I guess I can just hover over this and stop it that way. But and can't you like set it so it just stops after the song's over? I don't think so. I could just load every song individually, and then it would stop. But okay, whatever. That was a great song. I liked it. That was probably my favorite song on the album. Definitely, like you could tell the- which part was the chorus. The riffs were cool. The thing that was really surprising to me was sometimes with these Metallica songs, especially the like the the like two thirds of the song at the end that are just like riffs, um, <clears throat> you the the parts feel like they're long parts, right, and repeated a bunch. This song didn't feel that way at all. Yeah. Like even during mm-hmm. the sung part at the beginning, like I felt myself doing this, and then they would like I would just be getting into the groove of it, and then they'd stop it. Or, and then they do like some some stops or or like a, a a break or whatever, then go into something else and I'd be like, okay, this is like a little feels a little different. And then I, as soon as I got the feel for it, it changed again. And they did that the entire song. There was like no part of the song was repeated except for when the solo was going. That that was, and then they even still changed it up there a little bit too. But see, right? And there's like none of those transitions and. In- like I wasn't thinking about it like this, but like that's one of my favorite things about Metallica, which I think we talked about on it must have been seventy two seasons, I think. Oh, maybe it was the transitions. I think. Uh, but if that's what you also mean. could have been rather lightning or oh Master sure puppets oh, or justice. Yes, definitely. But then they didn't do it. They didn't do. They yeah. didn't do that crazy where like those parts are like so well composed where they go from one part to the other. I think the guitar solo. Normally, even though I'm a guitar player, and I guess I like guitar solos, but like that guitar solo is so cool because like the way that the rhythm stuff works in with it, and then mm. it, it also there's like three parts to it. It's incredibly long. Doesn't feel long because no, it they didn't. keep changing the background music. But then Correct. there's one part where the the rhythm guitars and the lead guitar really work well together, mm-hmm. and I really like it. There was a before the guitar solo. There was a part where there, the lead guitar was doing some like little little rhythmic thing, and I was listening to it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's like a tiny little guitar in the middle. Like it was, oh, yeah. and I was like, oh, but then the thing is they went right back to that section after the guitar solo. So the guitar solo was going and then it ended and then they went right back to that. And I, and it felt almost jarring to have that little itty bitty guitar in there doing the like addition, ad- adding to the rhythm. Right. And I'm like, oh, that was kind of a weird thing for them to do. But once I realized that was the section they were repeating, I was like, oh, we heard this before. So now we're grounding back to something we were familiar with. And then I think after that was when they went into that really cool fast the, the, <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah, which was really cool. Yeah, that was probably my favorite part of the song in terms of riff. But I'm a, I'm a sucker for like just one note going fast. And they were slightly palm muting it too, I think, mm-hmm. right? Like, um, but not fully palm muting it so that it was dead. Um, that part reminded me a lot of one of my other favorite metal bands, Scar Symmetry. They do that kind of stuff a lot, but they're much more of the like Meshuggah camp of stuff where it's rhythmic based, it's pattern based rhythmic guitars rather than lead based rhythmic guitars. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I love that. I thought that was great. That was mm-hmm. so good. Really, really good. So All right, uh, next track. I believe we're in the middle of the album now. This is Cyanide. This song rips too. 
<sighs> I'm glad you like this album so I, much, Chris. I do really like this album a lot. Are you enjoying listening to it this way? Yeah, I mean now, I mean, I mean especially we, going from this to the. Also, I'm gonna have to ask you for some things afterwards mm-hmm. because, like, th- that's. I mean, that's an education. If if you can if you can do that experiment at home, like in case I don't know, you clicked on a video that says audio engineers, so maybe you're interested in that sort of stuff. But like, if you can do that at home, if you didn't get enough of it through the headphones, listening to this through a streaming thing, who knows what quality you're listening to. But if you can get that and do that same experiment, like that's like a master class and like how not to do mastering Mm -hmm. between uh, master class Um, between the CD version is just abysmal. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's bad in a way that I don't know if I've ever heard an album be like bad. And maybe, maybe that was it. Maybe it's all, maybe it's all a thing. And that was like, we're just going to master this so bad. And everybody's going to want to listen to it so bad because it's actually good Metallica. So let's wreck it with the mastering and everybody (laughs) will talk about it for 20 years afterwards about how, and then they had to fix it. Well, I'm glad they did fix it and we were able to listen to this. Yeah, because, oh, I don't think you would have made it through. I don't think you could listen to that whole CD package. Probably not. I think you're right. Probably not. Although I made it through St. Anger. So it's St. Anger is better than that. St. Anger is better than that. I I think St. Anger had like really good ideas and was, uh, I don't know. I still think St. Anger sounds worse than that does in my opinion. All right. We're on cyanide. Confusing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. From an audio engineering standpoint, for sure. Uh Uh, we know what went wrong with this and it's consistently wrong. So that's at least Mm -hmm. one thing you don't have to be confused about every song section. All right. Cyanide. Ready, Chris? Yep. In three, two, one. Whoa. That's very seven dusty. Whoa. The drums, Ima- sound, the drums keep getting better. Imagine if the bass sounded good here, too. I kind of like like that big and thick. Is this the best the drums have sounded this whole record? Maybe. No. Yeah, the kick <laughs> changed and you don't like it. No. Crap, it got clicky. It did get clicky. And then it goes back. What it was only f- for like two measures. It was different. What That's the weird. hell? Okay, Saint Anger rearing its ugly head. Ooh, I like that riff. That was interesting. Big he, kick hit. He did he did three call my name, but the guitars did four hits. Or five hits. Normally Metallica does not do that. The hits equal the amount of words being said to emphasize it. They did not do that there. That was interesting. But they I bet they changed the word that they meant to say there. I'll bet you anything. Okay, they're still doing those like whatever more full chords on the guitar here like they were in the last song. In the last song. Or not the song before. See, the kick drum's different. And then it goes back. Yeah, it's still kinda not it's as still good. Kinda, well. But you're right, the first verse it really was noticeable. There's a weird drum thing in there. Welcome to Metallica. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. The compression on the vocal is different. It doesn't have that same sonic signature to it, and it, it's less compressed. Because those loud notes on there are getting, they're, okay. they're okay. coming through louder. There's some energy up in that 
to a 5k range that was not there before. Okay. Ah, so good. Now we've entered load again. Was that a vocal line in the middle of that? Not that I heard. It's a really weird tone. Huh. Hear that again. Feels like an octave thing on the guitar. Octave pedal, maybe? Let's see if they do it again. This is weird. I love this. That's a great use of lead guitar. I like this too. Yes, this is awesome. Way more bluesy. But the rhythm guitars aren't. I like this part of this song a lot too. It's thematic. Do you feel like the volume of the solo is about the same as the volume of the vocals? Just a slightly low? Not as much? I don't think the vocals sound too low in this song. Dude, this is great. Whoa. Dude. The distorted bass. Dude, this is so weird. I really like what Metallica... I really like this. The last two songs. Really mm -hmm. different. I can't put my finger on what it is. Dude, this is like a... Speaking of weird drum things. Yeah. I thought it was over. <laughs> I was reaching for the mouse. <laughs> ah, back to the intro. I do think the vocals are a little louder. You should get like a handful of silence tracks that are like 15 seconds long and put them between each track on your win amp so that you don't have these panic attacks oh. where some head buddy has put the break in their song for a tenth of a second and you start scrambling to shut it off or just use, use VLC <laughs> and just well, make it stop um, I think that's my favorite song on the album I interesting it's a very close I, second I really so. like what they did with the solo section it was really interesting to have that rhythmic part you know they really that, that whole song was based off the uh 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 you know, the whole time, pretty much. And how they incorporated that into every riff and what they were doing was really interesting. And I, the chorus was way less obvious there. I would be like, wait, are mm -hmm. we in the chorus? And then he'd like say the line at the end of it or whatever. There is stuff here that's reminding me of 72 Seasons. Like just, there should just riffs and yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. No, no, no. Listen to 72 Seasons. For sure, yeah. So. And you said you were saying, everyone's I think, has kind of said that. And we've had comments saying that too. But like, I just wasn't expecting that here. I guess. I don't know. Mm. I, I think don't know. this is better. Like if we're just going to hmm. talk about good and bad. I don't think it sounds better. I know. The highs are okay, higher. Okay, okay, okay. But but songwriting, I would it. definitely say more interesting for sure. Because 
72 seasons is just like riff salad all over. I, we talked about that. Like I, I have to think about like I what even th- is on 72 seasons. When you seasons. said Luxie Turnout, like I have to like, okay, so I know that that's a line in the chorus and then like, oh, okay. And that's yeah. the one with the drums. It's and, like, the one that's the most different of all the songs on the album. But I mean, like, I've, I've, I've heard 72 seasons like six, seven, ten times tops. Maybe I've heard this album a thousand times. So it's been around forever. Yeah. So it's hard. When you said like, Luxie Turnout, I, I was like, I haven't heard this part? album in years. And I was uh-huh. singing all nightmare long to myself oh, yeah. today, you were, like in preparation yeah, right. for like oh before I came. But here, even when just, we're like, as walking we're, around the yard, I'm like, but as we're sitting here, you know where all the you know where all the stops and I everything love are. This. I the, especially those two songs, I love them so much. They yeah, so I good. I really it does so much for me to just have the guitar stop and let something else play for a few measures, just a little bit. Oh yeah, like that just is it's so nice. Gives you a little bit of a break, and then you appreciate it more when the guitars come in and the song feels big again because the way the mix is, the mix doesn't supposed sound to do it, it in every every second verse of every song. The pop punk guys have been doing it since 1992. Well, James, well, get well, or you wait, you don't have the guitars in the first verse; they come in in the sec chorus, and then the, they're there. They're I, the second would, verse. I like it the but, other way better. But yeah, I agree, I agree. Having them go out or whatever, it's yeah, the bass, and then they're like, oh, the bass actually sounds. And the bass is fine on that. Like I, I, I do wish it could be a little bit more. And I, it should be the but, good metal bass, and it's just it's just okay with the yeah. fuzz pedal on it. Yeah, but. and there's there's not a ton of de- definition to it at all anywhere on the album, and that's fine. Metallica, I think, is still suffering. F- well, no, they were fine on Load and Reload. The bass sounds yeah. fantastic there, so I don't know what the hell. Why didn't James just play bass? Why hasn't Why hasn't James been playing bass on the records since Cliff died? Because he's busy with the guitar. It's very so he knows the riff. That's true. So just go, okay, pick up the other thing and play it again. And like it oh, probably see. it'd probably be the best thing ever. I don't know. You got to have a different I'm part. I know what you mean, and you, he could definitely compose a different part for it. But I don't know. I think he's already doing the two most important things in the band: the guitar, rhythm guitar, and lead vocals. See the now and writing the lyrics. I've never really thought about this before, but really, what I want to hear is I want to hear like an EP of just James Hetfield, everything, because he can play drums too. So I like, didn't. I did notice earlier this year, Kirk Hammett released a solo album. No sh. Yeah, it's called Paradise or Paradiso or something, or, or it was either either this year or the last year. Does it have vocals? I don't think so. I think it's just instrumental guitar stuff. I don't know. It's on their website. Huh. A whole bunch. You can buy the cassette. You can out. buy all these things. It's got a picture of him on the front. And um, yeah, it was. I'm not sure what year. Pete, let us know in the comments. I'm sure Chris will figure it out before then, before this comes out. But all right, the Unforgiven Three. Oh boy, <laughs> strap in for whatever this is, because the Unforgiven One and Two are phenomenal. And we already talked about how you guys have told me that Unforgiven 3 is really nothing like that, the, those, and it's not really a continuation, because Unforgiven 2 clearly has the riff from the famous riff from Unforgiven 1 in it, or the riff at least is based around something that's structured in such a way to, to be reminiscent of. And they start the same. And the songs start the same with the... Yeah. Right, the... the brass sound oh thing. yeah and so uh really interesting to see if this is even a ballad which the other two songs are i'm so okay interesting ready they are st- i mean they are still part of the same series you know obviously being for sure three but it is, they it is definitely musical departure i would say okay okay the unforgiven three the finale of the trilogy yep ready as far as we know mm-hmm. right as maybe far- there's a fourth so one Dude, the Unforgiven Four. That'd be hey, who who knows? All right, in three, two, one. <laughs> what the hell? I love it. Best song yeah. on the album. Speaking of piano, that's not real. Yeah, but uh, don't let that bother you. I don't. I don't know. I'm already biased against this. I don't like it. As long as he doesn't go. Hold my breath is a dig a dump. Please, God, the help hell me. Sorry, Chris. This is what's in most of the metal I listen to, so this isn't special to me. Did you just mute me? <laughs> You looked off to the side like, well, I'm muting that some. <laughs> no, I did not mute you, but okay. I wish I could. And the guitar 
his voice going to sound completely different. Some auto-tune there, huh? Maybe. It, it existed after this point. We... <laughs> on the radio too. Yeah, I never heard any of this. Ah, it's just so such a bummer that his vocals are low. Dude, this is this is reminding me so much of one of the songs from Load. I can't I don't know which one, not Unforgiven 2. That riff and just the way it comes comes in. Or maybe it's 72 seasons. I freaking love it. Fade again. Now it's gone. Unless that was a weird sounded violin or something. Those are reverse guitars, I think. I you thought think? they were strings earlier, but yeah, they are. I think those are reverse guitars. Unforgiven riff in there. Isn't that what this yeah. isn't this from the other ones that it's similar? Like it's similar. Why did Chris get so loud? Got close to his mic finally. What a nerd. Interesting sounding guitar there on the left. Is it strings though? There are strings in there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because you now you can now it's like now it's like yeah. S and M. The guitars are way like low passed in this song, so you can hear the strings over the top of them. Ooh.
think the solos are too low, too. note there. See, that should sound louder. It almost sounds like he's stepping back from the microphone, which maybe he was. Hear a little guitar room tone there. I like that. I like that you can hear the guitars yeah. amps in there. Um, they should have cut the intro. That's the. I disagree. That's the most disappointing I've been in. Disappointed I've been in the volume of the vocals this album. Mm. That song should have nice sounding vocals sitting on the top of what what that all is. And also, I will say that <clears throat> I was so disappointed in the strings there. They didn't really mm. do anything. At all. Ah, Even in the beginning, they weren't very like... I mean, there was a few different things going on at once, but if you're going to have strings play on your song, why just have them play long notes the entire time and do nothing else? Why do you track two sets of guitars? You can do the exact same thing with a synth pad. You don't even need to hire anyone to do it. They could have just... I I would say... This is a Metallica album, as far as we know. (laughs) Why does a song need to start? With solo piano. I'm just saying it could have just it just could have skipped that whole part and go right to that to that. I, I agree it didn't necessarily need that. But I I mean I like part of it. And then when the when the trumpet comes in there or whatever horn that is, yeah, I don't know how horns work either. Slay me in the comments. I never heard a horn. There is. There's the horn. It's the same kind of sound that's in the uh the X the other of two. gold. Uh Mm. Which is not a Metallica song, but it's a Metallica related piece of music. They open with that, yeah. That thing is awesome. We should listen to th- we should do that sometime as a little short reaction and just listen to the Ecstasy of Gold. What is that? Just an intro? It's a French horn thing. So what that thing is. There is a there's a big there's a it's not a big note, it's quiet, but there's a note in there. I think that part of the chorus is cool. It sort of reminds me of uh No Leaf Clover in a way, which is a song Ooh. that I really, really like. Mm-hmm. Um, That's an S and M only one. That is, I, that is an S and M yeah. only one. Um, I'm excited to hear that one. But for the most part, like eh, I don't know, it's just kind of forgettable. It's unforgivable. That's for sure. <laughs> it's the unforgettable three. The unforgettable. Uh, I I was really disappointed with a lot of that, to be honest. I that this is where they could have been like, it's okay, also, was cool. this. I I was really feeling it for a little while. But then I was like, ah, he's kind of just doing the same thing. There were a few little like bluesy moments in there that I did enjoy, but ah, I just that was mostly disappointment to me. I feel like the melody in the chorus is cool. I see. I couldn't differentiate where the chorus was from the rest of the song. Really, I think that's the only part of the song. How can I blame you when it's me? I can't forgive part. I don't know what any of the words were. Sometimes is, I feel like you say that with pride. He is. Well, I, well, I am, He's I'm, got a prideful <laughs> tone that he slips into. I'm listening to the. I'm. I'm. <laughs> as I stated earlier, my, my disap. I just am. It. I shouldn't have to sit here and wonder. 
I shouldn't have to fight with myself whether I'm liking what I'm hearing or I'm not production wise. And this whole album, I keep doing that because the to me, like I would have even been less mad if this was the only song on the album where the vocals sounded the correct volume and there was actually like some mid range to low low frequencies in his voice. You know what I mean? But there wasn't. His vocal voice was mixed the exact same way the whole time. And I think that the guitar solos across the entire album have also been low. I brought that up a couple songs ago. And now with this song, I'm d- definitively saying that I think that they're too low. And so, and that's a mastering thing, probably. Mm, no. No. I don't know. When when this was mastered, the the, st- the, the guitars were probably brought up a lot. Because when you master things, when you master something, the what's on the sides gets brought up in volume, and what's on the middle, what's in the middle gets shoved down a little bit. Well, it does if you turn them wide. That's what I, that's that was one of the things I was gonna say about about the vocal sound like that is like maybe it's just a victim of excessive widening in them. Right, and so I don't know. I all I'm left with with that song in particular is a lot of what I felt with Saint Anger, which was. Wow, all the ingredients were here for me for them to make a song that I really would have liked. It just never reached that. It never went beyond, oh, mm-hmm. this is kind of interesting and different from the rest of the album. It never went beyond that to like, wow. You know, like I said, the strings the whole time to me were were unimpressive because they were just doing these long things behind, which is still different because Metallica doesn't have any elements to their songs other than guitar, bass, drums, vocals. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. However... When they were in the song, the guitars were low pass to hell so that you could hear the strings in the song, which meant that the guitar riff was basically meaningless in those parts. It was just a jumbled soup of nothing yeah, underneath. I don't know. I liked it. And if you're going to have, if you're going to, I, I understand the idea of not having the strings be like too integral to the song so that when they play this live, they can reproduce the song. But like, if you're going to have strings on a song, let the strings be part of the song. There could have been, there could have been like one of those verse things that like, right, was like barely, like maybe the guitars rang out or something and the strings carried the whole thing. I, yeah, I, would, or, I would agree with Or that. do some pizzicato or something that's just a little yeah, bit like, different. Why did you bring all these people here to play three notes and go home? Like, I understand. Or to do that something regard. that, like I said, you could easily do with a synth pad on a keyboard mm-hmm. and it would have sound sure. no different really. So that was disappointing to me. We finally got some nice clean electric guitar with like a groovy drum beat over the top of it and bass and that stuff all sounded nice. And then I was excited for him to come in and then he came in and then I couldn't focus on any of the stuff because it was disappointing with his voice. You know, so mm-hmm. I was I was trying to listen to the to the riff there and it was fun when the distorted part came in because I was like, "Oh, is this the chorus?" Or not, and then I felt like they. I, at one point in the song, I mentioned, "Oh, we're going to verse three because it felt like there was like a verse, and then the guitars came in, and then I think was the chorus, and then they went back to the verse, and then the chorus again, and then the guitars came in, and then they went back to what I would perceive to be the kind of verse thing, and so so the structuring was a little bit weird to me, though that's not something that would like ruin the song for me or anything, and they did go back to to vocals at the end of the song. I don't know. Chris Parker, do you like that song? I love that song. Huh. I, 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 not for any of the production related reasons. I just like it. I mean, I like I like the I like the vocal melody. I really do. I think yeah. that I think yeah. it's really good. I think that James performance is pretty good. Like I like it when he sings like that. Yeah. I do mm-hmm. I do see to me the idea of it starting with the piano, that's kind of an unforgiven thing because the other two unforgiven songs both started with an instrument that's not in the song the rest of the song. Mm-hmm. So that's at least that's abstractly a way to look at it and be like, oh, sorry. I also I did hear moments in there of of that of of the unforgiven riff. Yeah, kind I of think thing. somebody who knows more about music than me, which is a pretty low bar, could probably go through that and be like, this is where the motifs from. The yeah, that's the music like theory part. We none of us are good with. I, yeah. I am trying so hard to think of the unforgiven one and two. What I felt, what I've known. <laughs> that's the unforgiven. Never shine through yeah. what I've shown. That's the one from the Black Album. Never yep. free, never so that's, be. That's two or is that's one? That's one. That's one, yeah. And two is on which album? Two is um on reload. How does no it's you know it's load. No, no it is reload. There is a good song and that's on the one reload. where he says "Unforgiven" too. 
So How sweet would it have been if he would have fit Unforgiven three? I somehow. wish. I wish. <laughs> like that would have been so. That's I wish you would have done to it. Do four because yeah. four you could actually work in lyrically. You could use B four. You. That's could what use you're some... Unforgiven for. Yeah. Bam. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. I know what I yes. was thinking. Yes. Uh, and then Patrick would have to slay him for inchromatical. <laughs> In, in proper grammar. No, no, no. In that case, I would forgive oh that. That's God. great. That's great. You would forgive it. It's only when he goes then. something like, I don't remember what he said earlier. Let's move on. I'm <laughs> mad. I, I don't remember what the words are that he said. Because it was so stupid. I liked point. it. I like that line. It's in Broken Beat and Scars. What doesn't kill you makes you more strong. I don't think that there's anything yeah, What doesn't with. kill you makes you more strong. But, and it's a good thing. because <laughs> Lyrically... <laughs> Uh, he says it I mean, because the phrase to tell you that you're taking the, the common phrase that too but yeah. you're also you're taking the common phrase and you're changing it a little bit which makes it stick in your mind and yeah. I, I, I like that and it works it's like not like that fucking it does song. sound caveman-y but uh. when he says I'm six feet from the edge and I'm thinking maybe six feet isn't so far okay, down okay this has, has to stop sizzled my brain for fucking 20 years I hate that line so much after, all right, okay. Uh, something about Judas. The Judas kiss. How long is this one? Eight minutes. <laughs> exact mundo. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm, all eight minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the joke. That is the joke. Okay, all right. Here we go. The Judas kiss. Three, two, one. Huh, there was weird distortion on those toms. Or at least a room mic was being used more prom predominantly. <laughs> oh yeah we've entered load slash reload territory again <laughs> Which the more I hear Metallica, I realize is best Metallica. some guitar or some vocal harmonies every now and then. Fun little fast picking part. I was wondering if he was going to work that in there. <laughs> Which I've been listening to the lyrics specifically because I wanted to know if he was going to try to work in Judas and stuff. But it's all a little bit ambiguous. Which is fine. I'd probably almost prefer that. So that was a rhyming scheme of four rhymes in a row. I've got to say, I love this song so far. I really like it. Good.
Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I feel like the guitars are a little toned down in this song. Not not tuned down, but like there's just a, they're a little less present. There haven't been any moments where like if the, if the song like scares us, there's no jump scare moments where all of a sudden everything's louder. Oh yeah. Interesting. Is that pedal turn or a... no? That might be some knob turn in there because it did sound like it got or, more or distorted a pedal, as a it got some sort of a volume, volume pedal. pedal. Yeah, the volume slug, yeah. You just can't resist that. Huh? Love it. That guitar sound is not can't, too quiet. I can't get. I can't. That it was quiet. It's not. I can't deny this solo. Okay, he went up. Pr his pretty far <laughs> on his guitar, and this is just nuts. I want to hear that on the, the over compressed part. Those kick drums would have just killed us. Talked right through it. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. I Just love trying this. to save you the comments. I love this. They're gonna shred you. <laughs> like Kirk shredding this guitar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like this. This might be my favorite solo section of the whole album. Ah no. Ooh. Boy, it just keeps going and going, huh? You know Remind me to bring up something after this is over. About them touring. That's a different kind of guitar part for them on the right ear. They don't normally do stuff like that. I feel like it. It kind of feels like the snare is coming from a different place than the rest of everything else. Like they had a the mic's a little further away in this song. For the snare. Sell your soul to me. I will set you free. Pacify your demon. Bow down. Hey, a little background vocal either. All right, that was interesting. I think w w one thing I was going to say was, I, and I just realized this now, but almost every Metallica uh, album that we, that we, when I look them up on Wikipedia, it tells me like how often they play the songs from that album live. It didn't, huh. it didn't say that on this album at all. All it mentioned was the first few times these songs, some of the songs on this album were played live so that people like knew oh here's a new song that's the only thing it really mentioned it didn't talk about them performing like nowadays if they have any of these songs in their set which norm which usually that's what it says on there's always usually a whole section about that on their wiki page so that was a little interesting um i like that song i feel like it was consistent from the front to back a little bit more than some of the other ones 
the solo section was egregious, and I don't think it needed to be that long. Uh, it was interesting what was happening, though, and when I listen to this again in the future without talking over it, I'll probably enjoy that section a little bit more. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that. But I, if we go for so long without talking, I feel like, you know, what's the point? I might as well just cut this section of the video out. You know what I mean? Um, I think that the they were flirting around there with some really amazing riffs that I think I would have really liked had they repeated them a few more times. Did you get that mm. feeling, Chris Parker? Mm, I, I mean, not without you saying which ones and me going, oh, yeah, or oh, not really. Because, Nothing off the top of yeah. my head sounds that well, way. Well, just because I know we mentioned that specifically on a few, on which one was, which one of the albums, I, it must have been 72 Seasons, I think it was. We we wish they would have repeat, or maybe, no, maybe, I can't remember what it was, but I remember us having a conversation that went something like, gosh, I really wish they would have repeated, like, usually with Metallica, they, re they do the sections, well, that's not true, they really don't do sections for too long because they change them up. But I think one of the things that I liked the most about Load and Reload was I feel like they gave every riff enough time to like star in the song and they had fewer riffs, right? So like you really got to feel and know the riffs that, that the songs were built off of a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like in this song, I really liked the core thing that they were doing, but they really only repeated it a few times throughout the song and only did it for like one or two measures at a time. And I would mm -hmm. have liked them to build off of that a little bit more rather than changing it so much for the guitar solo which was very long and they did do incorporate it a little bit but um yeah i don't know that's my thought on that song i i liked it I, i'm just getting flashbacks to when we were talking about ride the lightning and master of puppets where i was like i really can't even tell where the choruses are you know i wish that yeah. there would be some background vocals that's the thing that i really loved again i keep going back to load and reload and spoiler alert i think load is my favorite metallic album like I the more I try to listen to anything else, I'm just like, well, it ain't load. Load <laughs> sounds great. The songs are written great. There's the solos on it are great. Everything about load is fantastic, in my opinion, with the exception of like three or four songs that are a little crappy. But there's still 11, 12 songs that are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I don't know. I just I which whatever. That's kind of neither here nor there. But I just keep thinking like, man, this is the they're getting close to something that I really feel like I could latch on to. But the production and then the constant switching, which is is what they did on Ride and Ride and Ju and Master and Justice, right? It's I mean, just, that's the, it's just the constant the, switching from riff to riff to riff to riff. The transitions is such a that's such a Metallica staple. Correct, and I just don't think I care for that as much. You know, I like I like when they do it, and I think they do it so well in a lot of parts. And a lot of the times, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But to the, then follow it up with another one, and then follow it up with another one, and then follow it up with another one. And then the guitar solo just goes on for so long, and it's basically the same thing the whole time, where he's just doing the exact same thing the whole time on different parts of the neck of the guitar. You know, the same exact pattern. It's just like however fast he can move his fingers is what he's doing. But in this song, there were like moments where he at least held out some notes, and there was a little bluesy part. Then they go right back into it, and then they do it again and then they do it again and it's just like dude come on man you know a lot of people have been commenting on our videos saying that like oh from here on out all metallica does including 72 seasons is they write three times as or they write how do people word it there's two thirds too many riffs in every song like every song could be cut by like a third oh interesting and the song yeah. would be better we've had several comments Mo i think most of that was on 72 seasons and I really do feel like 72 seasons is like nuts. Like there every were song. A, there were a lot. That was the one time when we were listening to that. It was like there was just so many instances of like. Like every song has a two and a half minute intro and the riff changes like four times just in the intro. Yeah. So or just, just, I mean, every one of, there were so many songs on two, on 72 seasons that to me seemed like, because we, we know Metallica doesn't end a song the first time it seems like they're gonna. Right. But it, every time it was like, again, like again. If it was worse than Return of the King. <laughs> See, and I, I feel like, yes, 100%. I think we even joked about that several times. But, like, I feel like I enjoy that stuff at the end of the song a little bit more. Like, we'll play in with you on whether it's where the song's going to end. Rather than when's the song going to actually start, you know? Oh, interesting. W when are the vocals going to actually get here and the yeah, song going to start? I mean, sometimes it's okay. But then, like, go listen to All Nightmare Long and there's, like, eight riffs before the 
before the it intro's makes me over. wonder Correct. and then and that one's and that I don't know. That's and it's what, great. That's one of my you're favorite. right. That's one of my favorite. You're right. You're right. They can't get it. It right. makes me wonder if you would consider Metallica a good um, gateway drug to Prague. Well, I wonder. You know, I've I haven't really been thinking about that this whole time we've been doing Metallica. Like thinking, like, oh, is this Prague elements here? Because I have said multiple times during these videos that I've been getting more into sort of Prague stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was wondering. You had mentioned, remember you saying that, and I'm yeah, I'd be wondering. And I, I definitely want to, like, I, I actually was looking the other day. There's a Dream Theater. You can buy Dream Theater's first five albums in a set, the original album series, for like, I was trying to buy it the other day for $6, but someone bid $7 and got it away from me, the jerk. Those bastards. But for like less than 10 bucks, I can buy like the first five Dream Theater albums. Wow. And I'm really curious to do that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, back to Metallica. I think that. I don't know. There's just there. It's reminding me. Okay. Here's maybe a good way to put it. All the similarities to ride and master of puppets and justice are the similarities. I didn't want mm. the things that they're pulling from their past are the things I wish they would have left there. Eh, I, I get what you're saying. I don't think that that's really because true. this is, this is exactly, we had these, these, ex, this I is know, exactly I how know. the first there's three Metallica bunch, videos. There's a did. whole bunch of other stuff from those records. that's on this one that you do like, but I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and this is exactly how our first three <laughs> videos went. It was we had we were having this exact same conversation. It was like, why the hell don't they ever decide to end the song or start the song? And we talked about this a million times on those videos. But like, that's what they decided to bring back here. Like, why couldn't there just be a little bit more aggression and a little bit more speed? But you don't have to have a, a nine minute seven fast thrash song. Why not give me a five minute fast thrash song? And then give me like two or more songs on the album. You know what I mean? Nah. It doesn't that have song to be. Can't just be all thrash. It's got to have an acoustic section and but a string section. That's fine. I love that stuff. But they're not doing that. They're not changing things up that drastically. If they would do that more, I would be or I would appreciate it more. Instead, they're just everything sounds the exact same. They're just changing the guitar riff and the rhythm, which is fine. That's how songs are built. But they're just doing it too many times in the confines of one song. Like I think 72 seasons, they did the same thing, but they repeated the parts a lot longer, right? So it felt like there were less parts within a song. The, the parts were just like too long. Whereas in this, I feel like there's just too many parts, which again is exactly what I said on Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets when we did those. And it's probably what I said on Justice, but I don't really remember that video very much. So, all right. Now so what you're saying. Give me a pop song that's three minutes long. I was going to make way more well, fun that, of you than dead. that, but that oh. was the punchline. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't but mean it's not, it's, I mean, it's a little bit weird because Metallica is a very popular band and they've had some very pop hits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not pop in the britney spears way but like right like big songs sand sandman is mainstream and, songs and there's a lot of songs that are just freaking rock songs yeah yeah and that's fine i mean that's like i i think that you i mean i i like when metallica does that i guess and i, I don't think and i don't think enough other bands do do that well that's what i was just gonna say like i don't know if i've come across a band that does that really like mm -hmm. any of the prog stuff, I, I I was literally earlier today. I listened to one. I was Chris. I was listening to, um, you, uh, you all look the same to me by Archive, which is mm. famously their song. Their song one again is starts that album. It's sixteen minutes long, but like that I song, got a sixteen minute song for us. Yeah, that song is mostly the same thing repeated a whole bunch of times, adding and taking away layers. So it feels like you're on this long journey rather than someone just like taking you and pointing you in this direction, then this direction, then this direction, then holding you up there, then shoving you down in the dirt. That's what and makes it's just it like, fun. I, I, if you don't like it, that's fine. But that's right. What, that's what I think. But, makes it but fun. I guess since Chris brought up like the prog prog metal and stuff like when the more prog music I listen to, the more I, I realize it's not what I thought it was. I thought it was this. And I haven't listened to Dream Theater, which I know is like the the pre predominant like prog metal band. But like, does Dream Theater go back to choruses and stuff, or is it just like let's do a song here and then a song here and a song here and throw them all together on one track? I don't listen to Dream hmm. Theater. 
Because that's what I thought prog music meant. I thought the, the the progressive part of it was that there were no sections that were repeated. And the more I'm finding prog music or progressive music is, I'm realizing that what makes it different is that what what makes the songs longer is that they just literally re- like every section of a song is twice as long, and then they repeat the things, and then there's a long section in the middle where there's like a solo. And I prefer that vastly to this, where it's just like. 16 different little bite-sized things crammed into one song. And that's you must ma- not be a protest the hero fan then. I I no, I've never listened to any Dude, of that. Dude, that one, that Pomplamoose record rips. It's so good. It's, it's not so... as good as their first two, three. Their first two albums for sure. Uh anyway, since Patrick's looking at YouTube comments on his phone, I will have to say we did do some comment hate, but like and whatever. Not enough. It's fun. We could do more, but I'm like so many of you write such nice things to us and I really like that. I mm-hmm. love the nice things. Those my little black heart with No, I, it really honestly like I can't even we very rarely get negative comments anymore. And if we do, it's just someone who's finding the channel for the first time. And I will respond to them and say, like, hey, you should check out one of our other videos or whatever. One of the ones where we don't know how drums work. Inevitably, they respond again with, like, wow, can't believe I love your channel now. Like, wow. Thank you so much. That's awesome. But I don't don't understand how drums work. You changed the mind of some stranger on the internet? (laughs) I know. That's not possible. We just got this comment 14 minutes ago on the St. Anger video. I've always said this is. The the original Saint Anger when we listen to the full album, sure. Okay. So this is by uh, P L Y N with fire, playing, playing with fire. playing with fire, but no A in playing, yeah. you know, no G. Uh, <clears throat> he said he, this person says I've always said that this album slash era of them was Slipknot, and all who complained about the snare is no different. Love this album. Chris, you aren't alone. Also, totally heard that weird thing in Dirty Window I never noticed before. And nothing's wrong with Justice, Chris. It wouldn't be Justice without the production or pushed them forward, stood out, nor make it make it possibly the best Metallica album. This was fun, guys. Thanks. Of course there's nothing wrong with Justice. Right. Well, Who yeah. would quick Chris is he talking to? I don't know which I one. I love. Justice. I think I Chris' Justice. My favorite. He must be you. You guys, no, you guys both like Justice. Uh, yeah, I. I think must you. One of you must have said something about. I, I talk crap about Justice because there's no bass in it. Justice because there's no bass. But okay. but anyway, okay, whatever. We have one more track. Thank you for that great comment. No, honestly, that's not we true. have two more tracks. We have two more tracks. I was gonna say we have one more good track, but you guys oh didn't let me because now we have what to suffer. We have to suffer through ten minutes of an instrumental song. So let's just get this shit started. I wish I hadn't told you that it was. I That's read it on thing. wiki. I read it on wiki. Oh, well, you're a piece of garbage. All right. This is Suicide and Redemption, which is cool. Okay. I'm going to pretend that this is a song about the Red Dead Redemption series, and I'm going to try to delve deep into the meaning of it. Okay? Good. But just the, like, music part of it. All right. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Interesting. Like a fade-in type thing. Same bass tone as we had the solo bass tone before. There is. It needs to be more clickety clack. Why is there no more clickety clack in that bass? It's too soft. I agree. This is just going to be a whole song of what I was just complaining about for the last 10 minutes. That was cool. I like that. I definitely feel like sometimes they're mixing more like room tone or room microphones into the drums. Like, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. Uh, And they're not doing what they were doing the first half of the album by just, like, automating stuff louder to make things attack a little more. They're not doing that anymore. Or at least maybe not on this song, the last one. That snare sound good. 
All right, you didn't think I so. Thought, I thought, I thought the exact like opposite. Clipping. Oh boy. Loud. There was a little bad and distortion, there was distortion there. on that tom too. Yeah, I noticed that earlier. The tom hit had, had, had some distortion. They didn't EQ out enough lows. start counting the bars from when they switch riffs. This one I think is 16. Or I guess 8 if you're counting, you know, 1, 2. Neck pickup guitar solo tone sounds great. There's one that's plenty loud for you too. Yeah, it sounds super like nice. And I like what it's playing too. I can understand it. Is that the theme of this video? Patrick gets mad at things he doesn't understand. <laughs> Maybe. I love this part coming up. Were these riffs played on a detuned at all, I wonder? These riffs feel chunkier. Oh, that was Chris. I thought it was, J uh, that was James. <laughs> Looks like he's going in the back and going... Bah, 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 bah. Wouldn't put it past him. Ooh. This is like video, this is like end of credits movie rolling. It is. It you know? really feels like a yeah, early 90s adventure video game. Yes, 100%. Like, why wasn't this the last song on the album? Now I'm really curious what my apocalypse is. Clippy, clippy, clippy. Whoa, that was noticeably the volume was automated down there. Bass sounds better here. A little bit. I kind of think the whole mix sounds better. The drums keep sounding clippy to Changing. me. Changing? I, I can't not hear it. Okay. I'm all listening to it. Ooh. Hmm. 
<laughs> that was dirty sounding. I like the look they've been doing that. Yeah. It's the same snare sound from the That Was Just Your Life. Yeah, but how can and you... And the kick. Yeah, the kick, yuck. I think you're right, though. Yes. It's distorted. I just feel like all this cool stuff is wasted because there's no vocals around it. You're such a, like, normie. <clears throat> I guess. All, all I can think of is like all these, like so these riffs are so cool. Like it'd be neat if someone was singing over them. We're already at eight thirty. That's shocking. This did not feel that long to me. I think because they spent such a long section in the middle on that one riff, you know? This will probably ever get to a little drum solo, huh? Oh. Oh. I don't know where it's at. There's no reason for that. Like, Ew, lame. What a mess. Part of that's. I would be mad if it was like a good song that they faded out. I just that was like the two last two thirds of every one of the songs on this album minus the good third at the beginning <laughs> I just there was some really cool riffs there though I really uh, I do think and I it almost I'll do like I mentioned there I wonder if that was a little bit like more detuned than any of the rest of the songs on this album even if they just went down to that half like F or whatever rather than E or whatever I guess that'd be a whole step huh E flat, I guess it would be. I'll just let you do that. What? Nothing. Yeah. Um. Oh, his F is above each. <laughs> 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 Down aft. <laughs> e flat. I meant. Jeez. I don't know. It's fine. I think. I mean, what can you say about an instrumental? You know. So I mean, sometimes they're really, sometimes they're really cool. Yeah, I, I do want to go back and listen to Orion again because I know I met, I talked over that whole song and miss some really cool stuff in there but i don't know i some of that reminded me of load and reload again which i thought was really nice um the solo section in the middle was was kind of neat and i definitely didn't even feel like a drug on as long as it did in one of the songs before this judas kiss i think the song right before this um it, yeah when we got to eight and a half minutes i looked at the clock and i was thinking we were only going to be at five so that i guess does say something good like i mean that that is like a that's a good thing, I think. Like, that I thought the song went faster than it was. Yeah, for a so, long song, that's not. But I think that's because they repeated the, the the one main riff quite quite a bunch. I have two thoughts. One, I think that maybe. I like how Metallica uses the lead guitar 
mm. in this album more than I do. Like the solo, the parts that are like actually like full blown solos. Mm-hmm. I like them a lot too. I do like to love it. Mm-hmm. Love that stuff. But like when it like really ties in with the whole song and they're not just like playing over other guitar parts and like they all work together. And like in that one too, where he's playing this lead thing and he's up kind of high and then he goes back down and finishes out the riff with James. That part made you raise your eyebrows. You'll see yeah. when you edit. Yeah, probably. Um, for sure, for sure. I saw your facial expression change. Yeah. Like that, that's cool. Yeah. Sort of unrelated, but back to where you were before. Now, you guys may know if you've watched the channel, but Patrick thinks that every song, every album should be as long as it possibly can be to fit on a record and have many songs as possible on there. I disagree with him wholeheartedly on that. <laughs> I like Slayer records that are like 32 minutes long and when you're done with them like sometimes i hit start again because i'm like i'm not done listening to this i'm not done with. he would never do that as long as he lives i never would just listen to the same album twice in a row but but yeah okay i'd rather i this is just personal but i know what you mean but like i want like i like that more and i would say the same thing about live shows like when people are like oh my god it was so cool the grateful dead played for 16 hours i'm like that sounds like the most miserable number one is the grateful dead (laughs) but like any band really like i just i they played for two and a half hours it was the coolest thing ever i'm like that sounds terrible like make me want to buy tickets the next time you come because I didn't quite get enough that like I, I I got there but I didn't go beyond because as soon as I start to get bored I'm like oh god my feet hurt like I'm done yeah mm. so on that same thing I think that maybe part of what we're dealing with is that I kind of have the same thing that Patrick does and I think that Patrick's completely wrong that's fine it's an opinion thing but I think that I like that one of the things I like about the way that Metallica does songs where there are just like a thousand riffs and some of them are just at the end and there aren't any words over them. I think that all of these things play into the fact that I think it's fun because it puts me, it puts all of these riffs that it puts all these Metallica riffs in my brain and I don't necessarily associate them with the song or a particular song. Mm -hmm. And like, I just know that Metallica does these things and like, it's kind of dumb and I'm like, not like a song guy. Like I could not, song names and like where they're at on albums is just right. like something I don't really pay more of a nebulous thing. Much. Yeah. But like, mm. I think that that's a thing because like sometimes I will get a riff stuck in my head and I'm like, I know that it's Metallica for the sake of argument. Right. And I will sing that riff over and over and over again. And it got played twice on one song buried six minutes in to a part where they were never going to come back to the chorus. And it, mm-hmm. you know, like it's kind of, I, I just like it anyway, but that's also like another bonus thing that I like about it is that like I have all this stuff in my head that like, oh, that stuff Metallica does. And it's like a fun treat when you come across one of the riffs that you remember right. in your and song. And then you come back yeah. and you listen to the song and you're like, oh, that's that riff I was thinking yeah. of six months ago for three days that yeah. I couldn't get out of my yeah. head. And it's, oh, it's buried in this song. And then, and it's like, oh, they don't quite play it long enough. Mm. Like, I really like it and I wish they played it four more times and I wish that it had a verse over it or that it was a part of a chorus or something but no they just played it for four measures in the middle of a song at 6 30 you know like yeah we've got one more song to get through yep. so let's let's get through that and then we can do our little talking at the end and then not merc- for too long though mercifully shoot this death magnetic dog and put it down <laughs> and so that would mean do you we didn't give you a chance chris to say anything really there about that song do you want to say anything about that I don't really have anything to say about it. I don't know. I I found I have surprisingly little to say about this album as a whole and like every song so far. I don't really have I feel like St. Anger had way more for me to say. But Well, that was it's, it's easier to talk about something negatively. Well, even though we weren't necessarily trashing it the whole time, though we were confused. Well, St. Anger is just such a strange thing. Yeah. It's so weird that everybody there's plenty to talk about. My apocalypse. Let's do it. Sorry. Chris said a swear. It's not just me. It wouldn't be the first time. I've sworn in this video because you guys know don't know who have. Grace Potter is. It's yeah, disgusting. I do now and who cares? It's disgusting. Blues. <laughs> Play the song. <laughs> Damn song. <laughs> in three, two, one. 
Okay, yeah. I honestly thought that it might be some weird thing. So the fact that it that it's distorted metal is, is interesting. Ooh, hear that that ring on the side? I heard it, yeah. It was like a triangle ring almost, but I think it was just a, one of the drums ringing out, but... It was a little clicky. Are they doing what they did on oh, Ride and bass. Master? It's the bass. There's... Oh. Bass. Guitars sound different on this one, too. This song sounds a lot like credits music to me. It sounds like that was just your life. Which Except is the drums are like quiet? Yeah, in a weird way. This is what the drums sounded like on the first track. I'm telling you, it was terrible. You can hear the bass. It's just the, the scratchy, the pick on the bass. It's galloping and a little bit scratchy, clickety clackety. Not enough. He said the thing. He said the thing. He said the thing, and that's the moment. I, I, that is cool. I do think that's cool. I like this chorus. I like the riff. Yeah. When someone shouts go in a song, it should be a little bit more impressive after that. <laughs> right. Oh. This is just like Master and, and Ride, right? The first song and the last song were the thrashiest, fastest, heaviest songs on those albums. So I wonder if they put this song here on purpose. I just noticed the D in Death Magnetic is a sideways magnet. Son of a... It ends with a magnet in the sea. I know there was a solo there. I don't care. I just discovered something no one else has ever noticed. <laughs> What's up with the production here? It's weird. The drums seem like tiny, tiny. Yeah. Yeah, it's Is weird. there low frequency in this song? Not really. You were saying earlier the bass is much louder. Well, I could hear pick attack. Yeah, yeah. Or finger attack. Rob plays with his fingers, doesn't he? Seems a little muddy too. That's the beginning to hit the lights. <laughs> oh.
mercifully, it's over. <laughs> I like that song a lot. I don't think it sounds as good as other things on that I album. I think if that song was mixed the way the rest of the album was mixed, I would like that one. One of the That would be one of my top three, probably. But it was clearly just coming from a different place, which is, again, what I said in the middle of the album, where I'm just like, why I shouldn't have to fight with myself over whether I like what I'm hearing or not. <clears throat> and every single Metallica album makes me do that. And it's just so frustrating. Again, with the exception of Load and Reload, because those albums like definitively sound good. Whether or not you like what they're doing is, is another matter. But mm. like, I... This was the first album that I had expe high expectations for, which is probably wrong of me. I should have learned by now to not have high expectations for a Metallica Welcome album. Welcome to like Metallica. And it's just like... That's kind of true, yeah. It is like absolutely <laughs> kind of true. <laughs> Especially if you're under 50. <laughs> but at a, certain, at a certain point, it's like, do they even deserve to be what they are? The riffs! The Every band no, can write a riff. No, Come you can't. On. No, no, can't no. Know. If they could, they would. If they could, they would. Yeah, that's true. You're and right. You're right. And there's definitely a way that Metallica does it that makes them sound like Metallica, and that is like clearly a. Uh, <coughs> but it's just like, why can't you make a freaking album that sounds good? I'm really curious about you. Hardwired. I don't even like that for you. I love Hardwired, but I haven't I haven't paid attention to how it sounds. I think mm. I don't know, maybe ever. I just I expected this album to be faster, thrashier, which it was. It is it is it is it was. I think, I think this maybe maybe this is gonna say more about every all of this than 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 anything else. If we had listened to this album straight through, I think I probably would have enjoyed it way more. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one thing that the people so, at home need to understand is we've been listening to this one Metallica album for nearly four hours now. Yeah. And we and it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's a lot. It really is. I mean, and I, I don't want to use come out at three and a half hours. So <laughs> it's not like they don't have no any idea. I, I, no, they do know. They know. But they're already probably familiar with the album before they listen to it. Yeah. Like the, my first time listening to this, having it be just dragged out for so long, you know, I probably wasn't complaining the first first four songs as much about the structuring of the songs as I was towards the end. And now I feel relieved that the album is over. And I, again, I want to feel satisfied when the album is done, not relieved that it's over. But I will say the drums and the vocals, the vocals in particular in this album just piss me off. Like mm -hmm. I will say for, for a majority of the rest of Metallica's catalog, the vocals are surprisingly loud in the mix mm -hmm. right and i don't i'm not even just talking about like black album and load and, and reload where they were making rock songs and stuff and the vocals were like proper pop volume with the kick snare vocals being the the three main things like even on master of puppets even on ride the lightning even on especially on kill em all although i think we're listening to we listen to the remaster of kill em all which i think is probably the most affected by the remaster I mean, obviously, you're not, they're not going to bring the volume of the things, you know, mess the volume of things too much. But you can do little things here and there to bring certain things out. I honestly like every Metallica album, with the exception of 72 Seasons, which I do think the volume of the vocals was a little low, but not as bad as this. I don't think, in my opinion, I think this was the worst offender we've had in that regard so far. And I said it earlier in the video, and I'm going to say it one more time now. To me, that is like one of the worst things you can do in your mix to make me just immediately it is it just is so disappointing to me when the vocals are are too low mm -hmm. and i know i i know i say the vocals aren't that important to me but i think what i mean when i say that is the words the vocals are saying are not important to me i do think that it's important to have that clear decisive focus on this and then everything else wraps around it i think that's essential Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, one of the reasons I I talk about all the time. I love listening to music in other languages. But to just take the music and have no vocals there, I just can't. I just can't do it. I can't focus on it as much. It's it's too 
there's nothing nothing to like latch on to and even if it's, it's, it becomes more me. nebulous by design like it just yeah. isn't driven yeah and i've talked before about how structuring is really important to me like i like to be able to tell the section of the song we're in at the moment you know what i you mean you get mad when you can't yeah i do and it's very frustrating to me and that's that's definitely the other thing about this album no vocal overdubs really the entire time which is how saint anger was for the most part there were a few like alice and chainsy moments you know, like we There's got a on, couple little tiny on here, but, but like, you know, you know, we are so far from black album where there was just vocal harmonies up the wazoo and it felt like a produced pop album in regards to that. Hmm. This was much more James, just one track of James and that's it. And because, and which I think that's kind of more what ride and J- master was right. And justice even too. a little, I think maybe yeah. on. Justice, they did a few more vocal overdubs. Yeah. And and we remember there were we were surprised at the amount of things they did on Ride the Lightning. But so like in that regard, I guess what I heard about this album before we listened to it was true. It's a return Metallica doing more older style Metallica and everything. But like I said a little bit ago, if someone just skipped to the end of the video to hear our thoughts here, all the things that they pulled from their past were the things I wish they would have left in the past. For for not in all. some degree. You're being no, dramatic. no, not all. But like, like, like one of the thing we liked the most about Saint Anger was like cool guitar riffs, really groovy, groovy, cool guitar riffs. And I personally loved the way the guitars sounded on that album. I think the mm-hmm. guitars tonally sounded way more interesting to me than the al- the guitars on this album. This album sounded like metal band, like generic metal band. The sound, the overall sound quality, because generic metal band is also going to their singer's going to probably feel self-conscious and not want his vocals up very loud because they're just generic metal band. The thing is, this is generic metal sound with Metallica writing really cool right. guitar riffs and great guitar solos and intricate parts and things. But this it just sounded generic metal gen- sound. Maybe is does that make sense? Mm, kind of i don't think that that i know what you mean i don't think that was the greatest way to describe it yeah, but, yeah maybe not i don't know i just but there are parts where the production is bad and even on this remastered version like there is stuff that clips that should not and that is like definitively wrong mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i don't think that it was done as art you know like it just, right it's just like we meant for that to do that right right and like the vocals being low like i mean i don't get as upset about it as you do but you are correct they are and that's fine i wouldn't expect you to because you're a guitar player like the thing you focus on the most first is the guitars yeah. and i don't do that i tend to focus on the drums and the vocals first and if i can't get past those things it's harder for me to appreciate other things in the song the drums just sound bad in some places too. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know. The beginning and the end. I, I definitely, I will say overall, I was disappointed with this, oh. which which is a huge bummer for me because, like I said multiple times, this is the one I was most looking forward to, and now I have no idea what to expect for Hardwired. I mean, I guess again, I should I should already know at this point that you can't expect anything with Metallica, but the fact that I've already heard seventy two seasons, you know. We only have one more album, and it's what's in between this and 72 Seasons. And I think there's a reason that I kept bringing up 72 Seasons while we were listening to this. I think that there's a lot of this in 72 Seasons. There is. And if you ask me right now which of the two albums I liked better, I think I would say 72 Seasons. Interesting. Huh. I, Which I mean, I, I did not think was going to be the case. After the good three, this this is the one for me. Okay. Hmm. It's probably I think it's probably Master Justice Lightning this. I think mine's You don't have to say if you don't want to, because we're going to do a whole video where we just talk about No, that. I know, and I, I haven't really put them in order in a while. I know Justice is at the top. And then I wanna say maybe next on the list if it's not Justice Lightning, then it's Justice Hardwired Lightning. Really? Okay. Mm, yeah. So you do really like Hardwired? I do, yeah. Now let me ask you this while we're here. Do you like it more than this one? I I think I do. I was cuz I was thinking earlier the highs on Hardwired? Hardwired maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll reserve that until we get There's to it 10 songs my, on this record. My favorite song on this album, All Nightmare Long 
is better than my favorite song on Hardwired, and then Halo on Fire. I, I, for sure. I mean, that's I guess that's what I'm going to say. Like, if there's ten songs on this record, two of them are like really, 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 really good. All Nightmare Long and Cyanide are so good, and even and there are other. End of the line is good. That was just your life is good. Broken yeah. Free is scarred is good. The first half Day of the album was way better. Is fine. Yeah, and I I guess that that was one of the things that I was gonna kind of say. Like after Cyanide, like the Unforgiven song is fine. Judas Kiss I do kind of like. The instrumental track is what it is. It's not. It could have been. It could have just been a little better. I just feel like there's un there's there's untapped potential in a, almost all of these songs. Um. All right, I, I feel like we can end the video here. Hopefully everybody is satisfied with this four-hour video. Um, this is the penultimate studio album we have to record. Mm -hmm. So to me, I feel like we're coming up to the end of a the end of this. However, yeah. don't don't fret everybody. We are still going to do somehow. We, I've been told that we probably need to split both of these in half, but I don't care if we necessarily do the live portion of Garage Inc. Because one of the discs is a live disc, right? No, no, no. It's just they're both they're both oh, covers. That's right. One of them is all oh, covers one. they made just for that, and one of them is old covers that they re-released from like the Garage Days Revisit and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, people suggest that we split those two discs in, into into two or whatever. And with Symphony of Metallica, I think that's a really long album, so we might have to split that in two. But I'm really looking forward to that. So we are still going to do that. We're going to do. I, I want us to get together to do Beyond Magnetic or Beyond, yeah, Magnetic. Maybe we can record some other stuff when we do that. Um, if you're here at the end of this video, you're obviously one of the people who's been following us. Thank you very much for Thank sticking you. around this long. Yeah, no joke. One of the things I want to do on my channel, I've been getting a lot of great suggestions from people. And Chris Parker and my cousin Cody and I have been talking, and I've been talking to you about it a little bit. I guess I just talked to those two a little bit more. My cousin Cody... For those of you who don't know, if you haven't been watching any of the other reactions on my channel, we've done Blur together. He and I have done a bunch of shorter videos. He has been helping me a lot on the channel from like a technical standpoint. He he helps me do research on things and he helps me just try to figure out how to do certain things on YouTube. So like he's been a great help to me. But he is generally the person that I've been thinking of like doing more classic classic rock albums with. Um, I know Chris Parker and I want to do Pink Floyd together. And yeah. Cody had also suggested to me maybe doing a couple Pink Floyd's albums. So maybe it would be great to have him sitting here and Chris could be remote Chris and we could do the three of us with Pink Floyd. But one of the things I want to do, people keep recommending, they keep recommending Megadeth. People recommend Iron Maiden and Judas Priest all the time in stuff when we do Metallica stuff. So I've already talked to Chris Schoenberg about this and I think I mentioned it to you, Chris Parker. I want to have a time where Chris comes over and you're here with us too, Chris Parker, and it's the three of us just like this. And we're going to pick beforehand. Maybe I'll even try to do some polls or something on my channel. We're going to pick two or three songs at most, probably two. And I, the way I would like to do it is an older song and a more modern song. Two songs from Iron Maiden in one video. Two songs from Judas Priest in one video. Two songs from Slayer. Two songs from Pantera. Two songs from Megadeth. That's going to be great. There's a lot of stuff there that I will have not heard. Right. And so I, I want to do that. And the purpose of that will be to have some shorter videos that we can use to try to get more people onto the channel interested in those bands. Also to help test the waters for which of those bands allows us to use their music on YouTube in the videos. Although as I've explained sure. a million times, that's not necessarily a good barometer for what's available because Taylor Swift says you can use all of her music. But when I upload one video with the entire Speak Now Taylor's version on it, that whole video got blocked worldwide. So I don't know what the deal is with all that, but just doing two songs should be totally fine from all these bands. And that will also help me determine what I want to focus more on, put effort into on the channel in the future. Because if we listen to two Slayer songs and I'm like, both of these are garbage, then we don't necessarily need to move forward with listening to a whole Slayer album. Maybe mm -hmm. we just pick songs here and there because I know a lot of people want us to do stuff like that. Same thing for Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. I have a feeling that I'm going to in hate the vocalists for both of those bands because they're going to be doing the thing that the Led Zeppelin guy did and that Guns N' Roses guy does where they just scream high-pitched lady screams the entire time. And I don't necessarily want that. However, 
I'm really, really interested in Iron Maiden because I know that a lot of the metal bands that I love list Iron Maiden as an influence before they list Metallica. Meaning that I think that there's certain things about Iron Maiden that will be different than Metallica that I think I may enjoy. We'll see. I don't know. I have literally never heard a single Iron Maiden song. I have no idea what any of them are. Maybe I have heard one and I just didn't know it was them. And the same thing can be said for Judas Priest. I have no clue about that. Megadeth, I'm afraid I'm not going to enjoy Dave Mustaine's voice at all. The only few... Me- oh, no. There's the only- nothing to enjoy. The only... <laughs> Dave Mustaine is truly awful. The only few Megadeth songs I've heard, which is Crush Em and maybe a couple other ones here and there, I didn't care for his voice very much, but I could get over it because the music was really cool. We but need I- to listen to Sweating Bullets, even if it's not one of the two. Just what do I- Super Collider. Or- let's, just, let's just listen to Super Collider. Like, well, let's just, well, this is what we're going to talk about. So if you're still yeah. here with us in this video and you've just heard what I've said, recommend stuff in the comments. Like, we po- got, we post got on other Lulu. videos. I'm not even I'm thinking we're about We're doing, Lulu. I'd rather do Lulu, I'll do Lulu than yeah. listen to Patrick rip on Slayer. I'll, I, I think I will. <laughs> I, do, I do think I will like Slayer. Anyway, thank God that you're still here <laughs> this long into the video. But I've got lots of things I'm trying to think about for us to do. And this project with these different bands and just doing two songs from them is something that I'm really looking forward to. But that's going to be a whole day's work just recording the thing and then a whole week's worth of editing the videos after the fact and stuff. So that's one of the reasons I'm happy that I've got all these videos with both of you and my nephew and Cody that are going to be coming out like every few days. I'm just going to be trying to like post a a short video to just try to like keep people coming and going from the channel. But most of those videos get like, I mean, maybe even less than a hundred views or something. These Metallica videos are just crazy because they get, they get 30,000 views over the course of a couple weeks, which is really an anomaly on my channel and really weird. Also, I have to say, we didn't mention this at the beginning cause it wouldn't really do any good, but this Metallica video that we're in right now is the first one that I'm going to be doing to try to premiere the video. So we're going to have a premiere for this. You people have been here the whole time. Thank you very much for being here and for writing in the, whatever side of the screen it would be. I think it'd be over here. All the comments that have been happening. I probably, everybody's tired and ready to move on with their life so we can just end the video at this point can we yes let's actually do it my voice like (laughs) literally physically hurts from talking so much okay bye see you next time